box is open at the moment so that's great news okay so uh for all of you who have given up a uh, part of their afternoon um on a wednesday on say a cold wednesday it's not too bad outside um the whole idea of today is actually to i'm, I'm launching a new uh program a group coaching program there are quite a few smaller businesses out there that maybe the one-to-one -one coaching model hasn't really worked out for them in terms of it's not really necessarily being affordable. And especially at the moment, what I'm finding is there are smaller businesses that need an affordable option. They need business support 100% and they also need accountability as well to make sure that the things they know they need to do are actually going to happen. So really, um, today is really a welcome to Action Club. This is the first of a set of 25 sessions. So welcome to everyone. Um, what I'm gonna do is today's gonna be all about helping you understand how group coaching could work for you. But more importantly, my aim is for you to actually leave this session with some action points and some ideas that you can take into your business now. This isn't just about me talking about Action Club. This is about you learning and creating ideas to take away and implement in your business right away because otherwise we're wasting our time, right? So I shall continue. So yeah, the, the whole purpose of us actually investing our time in business education of any description is actually to help us take our businesses from good to great. So the business owners I work with have usually got good businesses. They're not necessarily huge businesses. They've not necessarily uh, got a huge number of staff. Some are one man bands, some are one woman bands, some are uh, 50 man uh, businesses uh, where they've got systems in place uh, that they're actually preparing their business for sale at the moment. So I work with everyone in between the two. Um, now, at certain points in this uh, webinar, I'm going, to talk, I'm going to mention the word team. And I know a few of you are one man or one woman bands. So you haven't got a team. But what I'd like you to do when I mention that is not to switch off, but to have a think about the team you've got working around you. So whether you've got people in-house or not, think about your suppliers people that are actually helping you, people you're outsourcing to as well. Um, so have a think about those guys as well because a team isn't just the people in house. Like I say, the whole purpose of today is to give you practical ideas. So you 100% need to get your pens out, you need a bit of paper in front of you, you need to take ideas away from this because that is the only way that you can turn around tomorrow and say to yourself, yeah, well that was a good investment of a couple of hours of my time. So. Um, Firstly, I'm very briefly going to go over what is Action Club because I know I've sent a PDF out to all of you on this call. I know not all of you have had a chance to read it yet. So I'm very, very briefly going to go over that. But then what I want to do is find out a bit more about you personally, what your aims and objectives are, what's been going well for you at the moment, where your biggest challenges are, just so I can make sure that I spend a bit more of the time on this session on your challenges rather than me just going through a whole heap of slides. Um, just so you know, I usually run these sessions live, so it's a, a little bit more difficult for me. So what I'd love you to do is use the Q&A box, which I've got open on the screen, I can see now. If any of you can't hear something, you can't see something, there's a problem, or maybe you've just got an immediate question you want to fire at me based on some of the things I've just discussed, um, I'm more than happy to actually um, answer those as we go, if I can. If I can't, I'll just hold fire on that, but I will answer absolutely every single question we've got. So um, what is Action Club? So essentially, it's, it's a group coaching program for up to eight business owners. So um, I, if I get over eight business owners on this call that want to start, start working with me, I would actually start a second Action Club because I don't feel that having more than eight people in a group coaching session is helpful. Uh, I find they're quite diluted um, and they don't really work particularly well. So. Um, like I said a minute ago, it's 25 fortnightly sessions um, in a 12 month rolling program. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you miss a session, well, firstly, I'm going to record a session, the sessions you miss in any case, if you're on holiday um, or you're ill, um, God forbid. Um, but if you miss the first five sessions of the year, then you would take the, next five, the first five sessions of next year and that would cover the gaps in your knowledge. So um, every other Wednesday, these sessions are going to run. So exactly the same time as now in two weeks time, that's going to be our next session every single Wednesday. Um, Daniel's actually put how many people are attending right now. So on this webinar itself, we've got 22 people. But in terms of uh, the Action Club itself, 
this is a new a new group there are zero people starting at the moment so i've got no one in this new group um, so that's that's the way things are going to work from now on uh, initially so this is how action club can help you um, we're going to help you fill in the gaps in your knowledge base so um, a lot of you are experienced businessmen and businesswomen out on this call the important thing is though we don't know everything right what I tend to find is when I speak to business owners, they've got a specific skill set they're really good at. They may be really hot on organization and they've got everything streamlined. They've got a really smooth operation, but maybe marketing isn't their bag. Maybe they're not really sure how to find the right types of business, uh, the right types of customers and clients for their business. So um, maybe that's where they need the help. Uh, maybe that there are a chunk of people on this call as well that maybe they need some help with their time management. They're not necessarily focusing their time on the things that get them the best results. So that's something we help pe pe people with all the time as well. In fact, time management is one of the things that I would say is the, is the biggest issue for most business people at the moment um, and before COVID-19 as well. Because what they tend to what I tend to find is that when they're not focused, they're not moving in the right direction, and then they tend to spend the time focused on the things they enjoy doing, not necessarily the things they need to doing, they need to be doing. Um, but so so our aim is we help you fill in, fill in the knowledge gaps. Um, we're going to learn from other business owners as well. So in our groups, what we tend to find in the in the, in the current group that I've got is that the answers don't just come from me. So although this session's done online. And I'm going to be going through a, a, a set of slides that are going to help you understand more about Action Club and how it can help you. In reality, the re a real Action Club is probably only four or five flip charts or four or five slides. The rest of the time, we're either in breakout groups or we're working together to solve challenges and work together to, to find out how we can overcome obstacles that are in our way. Um, I don't know it all. I'm never, ever going to purport to know it all. Uh, when I don't know the answer, I will ask the room and when the room doesn't know the answer i'm going to go out to my network of business coaches of 200 business coaches in the uk that may that may able to, that may be able to solve a specific problem that you've got because they've worked in i don't know they've got a client who works in interior design um, and that they're having an issue converting their clients as well for want of a better example um, so the whole idea is we're supposed to be sharing ideas and knowledge um, and helping each other grow and develop as business people the regular accountability is, is an issue for most people so um, what i tend to find is that people leave a, a session or leave a conversation with a whole heap of great ideas but without that level of accountability then what tends to happen is these things never materialize that they're left in a list in your interest so just out of interest if i could have a quick show of hands as to who has a, a list of things to do and some of those things on that list have been on their list for several months now because and they haven't actually got around to it so i can see uh well well everyone's raising their hand um that, that's great that tends to be what happens right uh we tend to have all the best intentions in the world but unfor unfortunately life gets in the way business gets in the way and those great ideas we had never actually come to fruition so my job all of the guys in my action clubs at the moment is to hold them to account to make sure that those things actually happen. Um, next, effective prioritizing. So uh, sometimes people have got such a large list, they can't see the wood for the trees. The importance of, of action club is to actually help people prioritize. Like what's important for you right now? What is actually gonna put food on the table right now? Is this actually working towards your 90 day plan? And more on that to follow because if it's not we're not prioritizing the right things so it's actually having the chance to step away from your business every fortnight um, sitting around sitting around a, a, in a room or in at the moment in front of a computer screen with like-minded people and actually taking time to actually say well hang on a minute you know if i've got uh, plenty of of contacts at the moment maybe marketing isn't my thing maybe i need to actually work out how to convert those contacts into sales opportunity so maybe i need a sales process and that's my priority because sometimes when we don't step away we tend to focus on the wrong stuff right and we've all done it before i do it regularly and that's why i've got a coach myself um, networking with with other business owners as well now action club is not a networking group per se um, that networking is a byproduct business does get passed between members yes 
The real reason why people come though is actually to build up their knowledge base to actually understand the areas where they fall down as business people, the things that have been holding them back for years, and then actually get that extra level of accountability to help them prioritize and make sure those things happen. Like I say, networking does come as a byproduct of it though as well. Um, a lot of people have left the sessions before um, and said um, they've left with a spring in their step. So I don't view my job as a business coach, as a motivator necessarily. Now I know, again, as a byproduct of, of mixing with like-minded people and sharing ideas and supporting each other, we tend to leave feeling a little bit more motivated than we did when we started the session, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm really proud of, of, of the guys that I've got that are actually helping each other and make that happen. Uh, but again, that's not necessarily the main aim. The main aim isn't to motivate people. Um, I've, I've heard people say, oh, business coaching is not really for me because it's all about motivating people, right? And I support, well, it is to an extent, but if all I did was motivate people, I'd just be getting them to do stupid stuff faster. And that's not my aim. My aim is to, is to help people. If, if, if they become motivated as a result of that, I want them to be motivated to doing the right things and not the wrong things better because it's just not going to work out. So just so you know, and, and I'd like you to have a think about this from your own business's point of view. So we've got a product ladder. And what does that mean exactly? Well, that means having products or services that fit everyone in our marketplace. Um, so the important thing is for me is that what we what we can actually do is we understand what we're um, uh, what we're actually um, hoping to achieve here is to find something that can help every business owner out there. So maybe have a think about your business. Have a think about, um, am I just catering for a specific part of the marketplace? Am I, uh, am I specifically catering for the higher end uh, market or the lower end market? And do I need a higher end product or a lower end product to actually make sure that I'm covering all bases? Now, some of you might not have a, you might specifically only want to work in a specific area of your business and i get that but if there are people out there that can't necessarily afford your higher end products um, or maybe there are people that would be prepared to spend them and invest more money with you because there's something you can offer them in the future that they'd be happy to take up so have a think about um, your product ladder what have you got on your product ladder now and what do you need to add on to actually help you um, help you attract um, other people that are maybe falling outside your your marketplace at the moment. Excuse me, I'm just going to need to rehydrate myself regularly. So this is this is how it works for us. So um, we've got four main services at the moment. So for the top one to one coaching, that's when I get together with business owners on a one to one basis on either a weekly or fortnightly basis. And what we do is we uh, help hold them to account and help educate them and help them grow their businesses. So these are for businesses that maybe, um, I wouldn't restrict it to this level, but maybe people that have got maybe five, five to 50 people in their business, uh, this, is, this is ideal for those people. Um, there are, however, one, there's actually a one woman band I've got who is a one-to-one -one weekly coaching client of mine. Um, and that's, that's right for her at the moment. Um, Action Club, I'm going to skip down two levels. Action Club is usually for uh, one man or one woman bands. Uh, maybe they've got a small team as well. Maybe they've got two or three, four people working in their business with them. Um, they, they can't necessarily afford one-to-one -one coaching immediately, uh, but they are using Action Club to actually get the, get the business skills set up so that they can then graduate to one-to-one -to -one coaching in six months to a year time. And that tends to be how long it takes. Um, Action Club Plus in the middle is for people that want a mixture of both, that, that maybe one-to-one -one coaching every fortnight works well for them. And in the in-between fortnights, they're actually attending each of the Action Clubs as well. So essentially, week one, they're doing one-to-one -one coaching. The next week, they're attending Action Club. The next week, they're attending one-to-one -one coaching. The next week, they're attending Action Club and so on and so forth. Um, mentor club is something I'm going to touch on as well right at the end of this of this session um, mentor club is essentially um, also fortnightly uh, group session too it's more affordable 
and it's purely coaching. So we, when you're not going to get the level of education that you get in Action Club, but what you do get is the level of accountability that most business owners needed to get at least some level of success. And that's maybe what's stopping them at the moment. By the way, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to put them in the question box if there's anything you're not sure about. Um, if I'm going to cover it off later on, I will be answering that. Uh, I will actually uh, put that, put that, park that and answer it later on. So um, what I'd love to do, I might need to stop sharing my screen now uh, just because I want to make sure that I can communicate with everybody and I'm not sure I can do that at the moment. So I'd like to know who you are. Just want a 30 second intro really. Who you are, what line of business you're in, and why are you here today? So who you are, what line of business you're in, and why you're here today. And I'm gonna to need to stop sharing my screen for a second, just to get the Zoom uh, participants up on my screen so I can see everybody. Bear with me one second. Fantastic, so I can, all the attendees are in front of me i'm going to lower everyone's hands right now so if um, i know not necessarily everyone's going to want to speak and i'm, I'm fine with that so if you could just uh, raise your hand one at a time and then i shall take you off mute and then i shall ask you just to introduce yourself let me know uh, which industry you work in and why you're here today so if you could just raise your hands one at a time and i'll take you off off mute so john's going to go first thank you john Oh, hi. Hello, hello, John. Hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. I can't believe I got in there first. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. <laughs> um, so so if you could just uh, fire away, introduce yourself and let me know a bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, my name is John Scott. I um, am the founder and um, director of uh, TLC, which are a brand and communication agency. We're about three years old. Um, we uh, specialize in helping charities and the health sector with their branding, communications, campaigns, reporting. Uh, why am I here? Um, well, I've known about Action Coach um, through last uh, most of last year. So curiosity um, in, in terms of the, the, um, the club. So that's why I'm here. Fantastic. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at everyone's uh, challenges at, 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 in, in a moment as well. So if I could have the next hand up, please, I shall... Uh take you off mute okay so let's let's go for uh yogesh next yogesh you're off you're off mute hi hello can you hear me for uh, philip i can hear you perfectly yogesh um thank you um yogesh pathmanathan uh sasana co chartered accountants uh we're based in greenwich um uh, why am i here as you know, Philip, I'm a, you know, we are a firm of chartered accountants. I always wondered what business coaching is all about. Um, just wondered whether, I mean, as accountants, we think we know everything, but obviously there are things which, uh, you know, there are areas that I could still uh, put my hand up and say I'm weak on, especially marketing. So I just want to know whether um, areas that I could improve on to, to grow as a person as well as to, also to grow, grow the practice as well in, in the future. That's what I'm here for. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Yogesh. I really appreciate your input there. So I need to make sure that I'm muting the people that have spoken. Um, and I'm going to unmute Liz now. So Liz, I've unmuted. I think yes. I've unmuted. You have. Thank you. Yes, um, my name's Liz Hamlet. Uh, there's some people I recognise already. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I am a founder and director of Spark Succeed. Um, I'm a life coach, uh, business mentor and um, professional organiser. Um, I've already come on um, some courses and have had the sort of action um, coach day as well. Um, but what I'm really here for is sort of looking at um, different ways to um, promote the business, um, to market. It, um, myself and the services and also um, to convert into um, more customers fantastic that's really helpful thank you very much for that Liz I shall mute you and I shall open the floor to Tracy we'll go for next you are unmuted Tracy I believe unmute now okay can you hear Perfect. me I can hear you perfectly hi 
Hi, yeah. So I'm Tracy Latterman of THL Coaching. Um, I'm an exec coach with an emphasis on career and performance with a particular focus on strengths and resilience. Uh, reason for being here, well, there's a whole list of them, but uh, I'm a procrastinator. I'm a magpie, so I see something shiny over uh, <laughs> across from me and I'll go and focus on that because it's something I enjoy more. Um, planning is a... Uh, it's challenging for me and also better marketing. Fantastic. And, and anyone that ever tells me they're not a procrastinator is lying as far as I'm concerned, because absolutely every person I think I've ever met has procrastinated in one way, shape or form. So thank you for your honesty. I'm kind of hoping that everyone's going to be as honest as you. So thank you very much, Tracy. I'm going to mute you. Thank you. Um, let's go for Claire now. I'm going to take you off mute. Has Claire gone on my screen? One second. Allow to talk and unmute. Hello, Claire, can you hear me? Hi, yes, I can. Hello. Hi, Claire. Um, I'm Claire Bromley. I'm owner of an interior design business called Inc. Claire Alexandra Designs. Um, I've been going about eight or nine months now, um, and I feel like I'm in a position where I need to step up my business a bit. Um, having got the amount of experience under my belt, I feel ready to take it to the next level. Um, I've got so many things that I want to that I want to do next, but I just I feel like I need someone to help me focus. Um, and I also believe that I need some help on the marketing and promotion side of things. Um, I am having a baby at the end of July, so I do need to have a bit of a break. But um, so it's working no, out. That's, what that's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> it's working out what I can do now, and then what I need to what I can do while I'm off and then early next year, hopefully back on again. So. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Claire. Lovely to see you again. Um, let me go to the next on the list. I'll just need to mute you first, Claire, and I shall see if there's anyone else. That's all. There's a couple more people. Let's uh, unmute Vicente. Hi, Vicente. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly now. Thank you. How are you? Hi, Phil. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. Very well. My name is Vicente Romano. My company is CMS Electrical. We turn people and projects on by delivering electrical services. The reason for being here is uh, uh, defeat the procrastination monster and, <laughs> and not be allowed to show and see the panic monster. That's an internal joke. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> it's it's a... myself. Yeah. And we have been in touch for like three months, so just listening more about you and your services. Fantastic, fantastic. So Vicente is referring to a really, really good YouTube video. Um, so if any procrastinators out there, which is basically all of you, if you type into YouTube uh, Panic Monster or Procrastination, um, I think it's a 20 minute video uh, by an American guy who uh, the name's escaped me, but it's absolutely brilliant in terms of understanding the importance of accountability. And the fact of the matter is that people are, are, are terrible, usually at, at doing the stuff they need to do first. They tend to do the stuff they want to do or just end up doing nothing. So thank you for reminding me of that, Vicente. I'm going to, uh, I think you've muted yourself. Okay. Uh, Francis, I'm going to pop you on now. Um, can you unmute yourself, Francis? Yeah, uh, hello. Hi, Francis. Hi, are you okay? Hi, Phil. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, Good day, well. everyone. Yeah, my name is Francis. Uh, I, uh, I operate a business called Arc Facilities, and uh, Arc Facilities is a building services and engineering company. So um, I'm here today because uh, uh, my the business is like a startup. It's just like a, like two years, and I'm looking into moving my business to the next level. And I want to benefit most, especially from uh, uh, marketing. You know how to harness marketing and use it to contact uh, potential clients out there. So my name is Francis once again, and my business is Arc Facilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francis. I really appreciate that. Let's have a quick look down to see are there any other hands that are going up right now. 
Um, so anyone that's jumped on a bit late, so what we're doing now, we're just uh, introducing ourselves. We're just saying our name, um, our, the industry that we work in and why we're here. So I just wondered if anyone else wants to pop their hand up. I shall um, just check that Francis is muted, which is fine. I'm going to pop Mr. Crow on now. Um, if you could unmute, oops. If you could unmute yourself, please. Uh, actually, yeah, one there. second. Richard, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Hello, Richard. Hi, you Crow. okay? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, I'm Richard Crow from Creative Wire. I'm a graphic designer and um, um, branding, uh, I'm not, um, I'm brochures, etc. Um, I mean, we've we've already met. Obviously, we had a we had a one to one. Um, interesting to see what you do. Uh, I'm interested in in seeing how I can help other people with their marketing and their branding and their uh, graphic design. Good. Which is at, uh, creative creative work. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Um, one of the challenges I've got running these webinars is uh, I don't know if you've ever run one before, but you've got a list of people and you're just about to click a button on mute and then the, the, the list decides to change itself and shuffle around. So I do apologize if I'm not as smooth as I'd like at the moment. Um, there were a couple more that have popped up. So we're going to go on to Daniel next. So I shall unmute Daniel. Um, Daniel, hi. Hello. I think the microphone's a bit uh, a bit of an issue at the moment. I can't hear you at the moment, Daniel. Hello. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you perfectly, Daniel. Hi, are you okay? Oh yes, <laughs> I'm the, good. The, thank you. How are you? The perils of live radio, which is what this feels like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can't hear yourself either. I mean, so. Uh, no worries. Anyway, my name is Daniel Lindstrom. I run the company Impact Foods International. We, we sell organic superfoods to businesses and we do everything from just supplying ingredients to uh, doing uh, contract manufacturing, private labeling and that kind of thing. Um, based in Orpington. And yeah, the reason I'm here is that I, yeah, I mean, I, I've had a contact with Phil before uh, where I was looking into getting a coach. I think it was last year we met uh, for a coffee and then we uh, I just recently did like one of those alignment days and uh, basically looking into maybe either doing one-to-one -one or group coaching. So this is sort of, I guess, the taster sessions. And, uh, Test, testing it out to see if it's it out, something yeah, you, you want to do. Exactly. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things to sort out. But anyway, all, all, I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> good, good, good. And uh, thank you for getting your focus sheet back to me, Daniel. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Great, fantastic. Thank you. I should pop you on mute. Uh, one second who haven't i spoken to that has raised their hands so far i haven't spoken to dio yet let's pop dio on um, i'm going to unmute you dio i think i've unmuted you Except hello hi how are you dio are you, you okay yeah, i'm very well thank you yeah very well thank you very well uh, perhaps you can introduce yourself to everyone else that's on the call that doesn't know you sure Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dayo Gunjabi. I run an IT support company, um, and I do a little bit of property management as well. Uh, the IT company, we do both IT support and we do IT development. We are based in London, we cover Kent, London, and Bournemouth. Um, what I'm looking to get out of the session is basically um, any new ideas, any areas that we can look at changing the business uh, because my business changes very, very quickly. So it's just look, getting ideas and how to keep up and what, what people are doing and, and, and learning as much as possible, really. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's great. Lovely to have you on again, Dio. I'm just seeing if there's anyone else that's decided to pop their hand up. I'd like to uh, take Nazmin off now. Um, I'm going to unmute Nazmin. Nazmin, can you hear me? Yes, hi, I can hi, hear Nazmin. you. Hi, Nazmin, hi, hi. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Um, so I'm Nazmin Chowdhury. I have a law firm, NC Law, in um, Earlsfield in Wandsworth. Uh, reason I'm here today is just to... Um, I, I'm a sort of sole practitioner. I have employees, so sometimes it can get a bit, you know, where you don't have anybody else sharing the load with you and just developing ideas, promoting, etc. cetera. So um, that, that's it, really. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Nazmin. I appreciate that. There are a few people on there that have 
not put their hands up yet. It might be because they can't uh, unmute themselves. Maybe they've got no microphone, which is fine. Um, if there's anyone who else who would, I'm just, dis I'm just gonna lower all hands at the moment just to make my life a bit easier. If anyone could please put their hand up that hasn't actually had a chance to introduce themselves that wants to, that would be fantastic. I'm just gonna mute a couple of the people that I've failed to mute at the moment. That would be really good. Okay, Vicente, I've just noticed has posted that YouTube video, which is fantastic. So uh, don't switch it on now, but um, a bit later on, if you wanna cut and paste that before the end of the webinar, definitely look at it. It's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic video. So um, Mick and Mary, um, I'm, or Mary and Mick, should I say, I'm going to take you off mute and I'd like, love you to uh, say hello as well. So um, Mary or Mick. Um, oops, I'm trying to unmute you. Um, can you hear me, Mary and Mick? Yes, I can hear you. Hello, Mary. Are you OK? Hello. Yeah, I've only just this second joined. Oh, no problem at all. So I had trouble. I tried to join earlier and it, and it just wasn't doing it. Oh, never mind. Well, at least no, you're on now. <laughs> or we've, or we've, we've just gone around the table, essentially, if, that, if we've got a table, that is. And yeah. we're, just, we're just finding out exactly who we are, uh, what industry we're in and why we're here today, really. So you haven't missed too much so far. OK, um, right, I'm Mary um, from Mary and Mick Design. We're graphic designers. Um, we mainly do design for print and websites. Um, what else do you need to know? We work for local small businesses mainly. Um, that's what we like to do. And if you want to see more of what we do, can do, look at our website. We've got um, all our portfolio on our website. Um, and is that, I think that's it. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And why did you think it'd be a good investment of your time to log on to this Zoom call today? Um, I need pushing to do things. I've got a list of things I need to do with the business and I need someone to just give me a dig and say, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the reason I've got a business coach myself, really. I think um, I, I told someone that a while ago. And they said, well, hang on a minute. Surely you've got all the answers. Why do you need a business coach as well? I said, well, firstly, I haven't got all the answers. And secondly, I need a business coach primarily to kick me every now and then and just have regular sessions to make sure that I'm doing what I, what I need to do, really, and that I'm staying on track. So thank you very much, Mary. I really appreciate that. So I know we've got a few more people that um, maybe for one reason or another, uh, they can't take themselves off mute so far, which is, which is fine. So I shall back, go back to my screen. Um, and say goodbye to you for now, but stay on because we are just about to uh, carry on with where we were at. So I'm just conscious of the fact. So fantastic. So we've got to the stage now whereby I can't, uh, I can't see the Q&A box at the moment, uh, but I'm not going to interrupt it for that because we've, uh, I can catch up with that at in about sort of 20 minutes time when we go into a break. So essentially, who am I? Um, I, I think most of you on the call know me already. Um, so I shall go through this briefly. Um, I uh, used to run a marketing agency for 17 years. We sold that business. Uh, I was coached for the last two years of the business. Uh, it wasn't worth anything at the point where it was being where I was being coached because it wouldn't run without wouldn't run without me. I had 15 people working for me, and it was a profitable business. But there's no way anyone would want to buy that business off me because it wouldn't work without me. So how could I actually sell it to somebody? without me still working there if that makes sense so uh i i was actually coached and helped to actually put systems in place now when i sold the business i realized i really enjoyed being coached along the way and i thought well how can i help people create a business that could potentially work without them if that's the route they want to go down or just be able to make the money that they need to be able to put food on the table and enjoy the life enjoy their lives a bit better than what they are doing at the moment and for some people that means adding adding profit to their business uh, some people it means just uh, just just spending their time better at work so they can get home uh, and see their families a bit more frequently and do what they want to do with their time a little bit more so they don't necessarily want to sell their business they enjoy running their business but they want they want it to they want to get more out of it um, for some people they just want to get more out of their team maybe they're making enough money maybe they're not spending crazy hours in the office but their team are driving them to distraction they're not doing what they want them to do and they know that they could get more out of their team so really the challenges are time money and team 
it's pretty simple when you look at it that way. So the reason I've put so many family pictures there, like I've said before, that's the reason I'm doing this. I'm doing this for my family, um, my extended family at the bottom left, uh, my uh, the family I live with at the top right. Um, and uh, the other pictures are work related pictures uh, because I, I speak locally at events when I'm allowed to speak at events. Um, I recently ran a, uh, a, um, a larger event called the Bromley Business Excellence Forum for 130 uh, business owners locally from all walks of life, the same as you. Uh, they were all business owners though. They all wanted to understand how they could grow their business and get action points and take those away, which is 100% what needs to happen today. So um, why have I launched Action Club? So the whole reason being really, that the reason why I launched my first one was that at the time I was servicing one-to-one -one clients, I was helping business owners grow their business. I was holding them to account. I was supporting them. I was giving them tips and ideas along the way to help them grow. But I figured that the issue was some of the, uh, you know, the actual price point, the investment level for one-to-one -one coaching was a bit too, too much of a stretch for the smaller businesses out there. And, and I knew that if I could find a, a, a product or a service to actually offer the smaller business owners um, to learn in a group environment, which sometimes serves people better than working one to one, um, then I thought, well, it might be a great idea to actually do that, to help local business owners with the, the issues that small businesses have got. So typically a one man or one woman band obviously hasn't got an internal team to help them. So they haven't got the same, they haven't necessarily got the same issues that people that are running 40, 50 man businesses have got. So I, I needed to be able to focus my efforts to those guys as well as the one-to-one -one clients that I had. Um, so there's a, um, uh, on the screen right now, there's a, there's, there's a session I put on, I think it was around a year ago. Uh, we run them live, but for now, I figured, I, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, well, I'm just going to wait until I look, wait for my next action club before we come out of lockdown. That's a sensible idea, right? So we can go back to running them live. And then I thought, hang on a minute. I don't, we don't know how long lockdown is going to be realistically. And if the last thing that comes out of lockdown is group sesh, is group meetings of over eight or 10 people, then we're stuffed. We're actually delaying we're stunting the growth of our business based on the, the position we're in right now, which is lockdown, which might be two, three, four months away. We don't know. So I figured let's start right now because there's no better time to start than the present. So that's why I'm launching this now. So what are we going to cover today? Um, we're going to cover some rules of the game right, right away. A couple of simple rules that are going to help you get more from this session than if, we, if I didn't actually bother going over those. Uh, we're going to look at wins and challenges. So we're going to look at the, the wins that you've had over the last few weeks. I always like to start on a positive and any challenges you've got as well. Now, you might have touched upon those already, so we, might be, we maybe don't need to spend too much time on that. Um, who we help and how we help them. So I'll go over uh, especially uh, the local business owners that I'm helping at the moment um, and how we're actually helping them as well. So maybe you can work out if you, to see if you fit within that sort of uh, that bracket as well. We're going to have a quick break, a five minute tea break. Um, I definitely will want another cup of tea because uh, talking this much gives me a dry throat, which I, I don't think anyone wants a dry throat at the moment, bearing in mind everything that's been going on. Um, we're going to cover off the, the after the break, we're going to go over the the how we actually help grow businesses. So the specifically the, the main areas that you need to cover to get your business to where you want it to be. And at that point, that's the point where you're going to get your pens out because that is when all the ideas are going to come after the break. They might be ideas coming from me. They might be ideas coming from you. I might have stimulated an idea that you've already had that you haven't put into action yet. So what I want to happen is for you to create a list of as many ideas as possible after the break. And then just before the end, we're going to go through and we're going to put an asterisk next to the top three or four ideas that you know you need to do right away or at least within the next couple of weeks. I want us to focus our mind. Uh, one thing I would encourage you not to do is make notes at every given opportunity of everything I say, because what's going to happen is you're going to end up with five or six pages of notes. You're not going to take action with any of it. It's going to go in your in tray or on your desk or in a drawer or on your bookshelf. I know because I've done it myself. I used to turn up to these things, whether it's a webinar or a live event, scribble away frantically, trying to get as much value out of it as possible. And then as a result, not doing anything, not taking action and it being pretty much an, a total waste of time. So 
don't feel guilty that you're not scribbling stuff out because it is not going to help you anyway, I don't think. Um, we're going to, um, at the end, we're just going to stop for a few questions. I'm sure there are going to be questions that people have got that they're not sure about, whether it's specific to coaching or whether it's specific to issues that they've got and they're not sure what to do and how to get around them. And I can help with that. Um, we're going to look at any steps you want to take. If you want to start working with me at the end, you're more than welcome to. If you don't, that's fine as well. As long as you get some action points to take away, that's really important. Um, and then what I'd love you to do, I'm going to post a feedback link in the chat box uh, at the end. And what I'd love you to do is, is actually uh, click on that. It will take you possibly 60 seconds to fill that out. It's really simple. I want to know a bit about the session, what you've enjoyed. And obviously, if you want to communicate with me about working with me and signing up for Action Club, the opportunity is going to be there as well. So um, also, after, you, after the session, have a think about that feedback form that you filled out and think, well, actually, is that something I could be asking my clients to do? Um, and if that was to happen, what information would I get back that could actually help me develop my business and provide a better product or service than what I'm currently providing? So let's get started. The two rules are the only failure today is the failure to partic participate. And what do I mean by that? I mean, um, very easy when you're on these webinars. I can't see you all. You could be on your phones typing out a text message as I speak or answering emails or on your other computer or making notes. You can do that if you want. I can't stop you. I can't see you doing it. But the only way you're going to get value out of today, the rest of this session, is actually by participating. And by that, I mean paying attention, listening, making notes and actually uh, joining in with the conversation when the, when the need arises. Um, I always say this, if you, you know, if you give anything less than 100 percent to what you're focused on, then you're not actually doing it correctly because, you know, the word multitasking is a bit of a misnomer as far as I'm concerned, because if I'm focusing on something else at the same time as I'm presenting now, I'm not actually able to focus on both things. Uh, it's not just a man thing, I promise you. Um, but what tends to happen is you spend a couple of seconds there, a couple of seconds there, a couple of seconds there, and you're flitting backwards and forwards. And as a result, you do nothing that well. And I know for a fact that focus is the number one reason why most business owners don't get to where they want to get to. Focus is absolutely critical. So for the rest of this session, we're going to have a break. So at least there's a bit of a, a break from me talking. Um, but do your very, very best to focus throughout. And that's the way you're going to get the most value, the best ideas that are going to help you forward with your business. Uh, the other thing is the 80-20 rule. I've done this before. Um, you know, 80% of the people on this call, unfortunately, are going to do nothing. Um, they're not going to, they're going to have taken notes. They're going to have, you know, created action points. They're going to go away. Life's going to get in the way. Business is going to get in the way and they won't actually do anything with it. They won't work with me. That's fine. That's, that's not important, but they're not actually going to take away action points and they're not going to change the way they work and they'll go back to the same old, same old tomorrow. So I want to make sure that you're all one of the 20%. Um, I can't see uh, hands going up at the moment because the screen's behind my screen, uh, but I'm assuming that you're all going to be one of the 20%. Oh, I can see hands going up. Fantastic. It is working well. So if, if you're one of the 20% the that promises to take action, Please put your hand up now just so I can see. Fantastic. I can see the, the participants raising their hands like crazy, which is great news. So I can guarantee that you're all going to take action at the end of this call, whichever the action that is, which is great news. So I want to now just go and look at our businesses since lockdown began. So I'm going to go around the tables again. I'm going to ask a few people, not necessarily everybody, if time doesn't permit. I want to know your biggest wins since lockdown started, because I know for a fact there are businesses out there that have, uh, that have created new ideas that they maybe wouldn't necessarily have had uh, before lockdown. They've had to pivot their business, change their business around to make it work during lockdown. Or maybe you're fortunate enough to be working in one of the boom industries at the moment as well, and you've experienced a sudden influx in, in, in growth of orders. Um, I know that for some people it's difficult to focus on the wins because it's been a really tough environment we're working in. I'd like us all to look at our biggest challenges as well. So what I'm going to do now, again, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to get the list of participants back up again. I'm going to lower everyone's hands. Um, and if any one of you could just raise your hand just to discuss your biggest win and your biggest challenge. I've dumped this one on you. So have a think about that for a second. 
So I'm looking to find the biggest win and the biggest challenge. So if anyone wants to kick off, just raise your hand. I shall take you off mute. So more difficult questions to answer immediately. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off actually then while you're thinking of raising your hand. So my biggest win has been to actually create a, um, an, an online um, action club which I wasn't going to do beforehand because I figured that lots of people prefer to meet in person. And what I found is that lots of people actually are happy to meet online. Uh, hence all of the networking, the Zoom calls that are going on at the moment. Um, as long as they're structured in the right way with enough breaks, they 100% can work. And this has been something that's triggered that for sure. Um, my biggest challenge, I suppose, is, um, is time at the moment. I'm finding that I'm, I'm, uh, having more conversations with more business owners, it's structuring my day appropriately so I can make sure I hit my priorities and I manage to look after all of my clients to the best of my ability, uh, which, is, which is a challenge for me right now. So if I could start with Mary, so I shall take you off mute, Mary. Yeah. Um, our biggest win um, was we've just done a website for a plumber called Danny, Danny Williams and it went live on Monday. and. And that was just really nice doing that because we haven't had that much work in since the lockdown. Um, so that was just something sort of we've concentrated on. Um, obviously, we can do websites um, working from home, no problem. Um, Good. That's so, great news. So that's, yeah, that's been brilliant doing that. Um, trying to think what the biggest challenge is. Probably, um, I mean, it was awful when suddenly lockdown happened, phones stopped ringing and, you know, just no inquiries really at all. Um, so that was when it went into panic mode, really. Um, and, yeah, that was all a bit weird, but it, so things are definitely picking up now. Good stuff. I, I think that a lot of businesses went into, a, went into an immediate meltdown. There were a lot of knee-jerk reactions. I saw a lot of business owners making staff redundant immediately without actually creating a cash flow forecast, without working out what needs to be done and approaching things in the right order. So um, what I tend to do with my clients is, is challenge their decision making sometimes. And I'm not afraid to do that because um, otherwise what tends to happen is knee-jerk reactions can sometimes not be the right ones. Um, I'm all for taking action and doing it quickly but at least getting control of the facts and figures first before we make those changes. So thank you very much, Mary. I shall put you on mute. I'll take a, I'll take a couple more people. So uh, Tracy, I'm going to unmute you now. So Tracy, what would you say your biggest wins been and your biggest challenge has been? So the biggest win was um, I secured a contract with a law firm with 10 equity partners and I went in and did a really lovely project with them, with all 10 of them, coaching them and looking at their strengths as a group. Um, and out of that as well, they actually recommended me to one of their clients, which I think that was, for me, that was amazing that they had that trust to actually recommend me to one of their clients. Wow, that's um, fantastic. So since then, problem is, is all of, so prior to COVID, all of my clients came through my existing network and through, you know, if I get in front of people, I normally will, providing they've got the need, I'll normally get the work, but not getting in front of people, I'm finding it really challenging. And the other thing is, uh, is really just understanding what's the best use of my time. Because I said before, you know, I'll go off and do one thing and then so oh, I'll speak to a sales guy or I'll do some training with him or should I speak to a business coach? Should I do some of that? Or, oh, should I go and do something? Else? And it's just, yeah. And then I end up just completely filling my diary and uh, don't know which way to turn. OK, OK. That's a great challenge to have because um, um, it's something we're going to go over a bit later on. And I'm absolutely certain that a lot of people have got exactly the same challenge. So thank you, Tracy. Does anyone else want to raise their hand just to go over any their biggest win and their biggest challenge at the moment? Louisa, let's pop you on. So, hi, Louisa. Going to click on allow to talk again. Hello, Louisa, can you hear me? I think I can now. Hi, Louisa. Hi, Phil. Thank you. No my problem. My thing was to find out I could work from home and I could also divert my office calls to my mobile phones and auto or multi, multi, multi um, phones in the sense that it could ring in my office and as well as at home. And my biggest challenge was not having clients during the lockdown. 
not having flights during lockdown. Okay. So, um, so is that still an issue now or are they starting to come back a little bit now or is it, or is it still an issue for you? It's still an issue for me. Okay. I think it's still an issue for a lot of people. I mean, there, there are some businesses which seem to come back very, very quickly and there are others which, which are still, um, really struggling at the moment. So, um, you know, everybody on this call is in a different stage at the moment in their business. Some are, some are viewing to, you know, what we're going through now as a crisis, some are viewing it as a challenge and some are viewing it as an opportunity. Uh, some of that is mindset related, definitely, because I have seen industry owners, in, sorry, business owners in the same industry, one of them viewing it as a crisis and the other viewing it as an opportunity. So I know that, that it's not always a, a, a it's, it's very easy to look at our industry and say, oh, it's, it's decimated at the moment. There's nothing we can do. Um, you know, I, I know one guy who's an acupuncturist and he said, well, I 100% can't get near any patients at the moment. Anyone in sort of a, a holistic therapy massage at the moment, they can't do that. But I always say, well, hang on a minute. Let's focus on what we can control. What, what can we do now that's going to help us create a business to be proud of when we step out of lockdown? Um, and, and also, obviously, looking at the, 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 the important stuff like cash flow forecasting, loans and grants as well. So that's another thing we do. But thank you, Louisa. Um, I will ask a couple of other people. Let me see who I, haven't I spoken to yet. I'll, I'll, I'll actually I'll, um, I'll just go for two more. Actually, I'll just go for a John and then Vicente after that. And then we'll c continue. Hello, John. Oh, hi um okay so so biggest win was was actually uh, kind of turning a crisis into an opportunity so we'd um so just before the end of the year we created a kind of thought leadership events program for a client um obviously that that was cancelled um so um just turning that back round um from a from a, a project that had basically been cancelled um, to just thinking about how we might deliver um, it through different means. So, um, yeah, we, we kind of pivoted the project and turned it around. So that was a big win and it's actually turned into a, a bigger project. Um, wow. So that's kind of like a win-win. <laughs> right. That's amazing. Um, and biggest challenge is same as Tracy, really. Just a lot of our business is done face-to-face -face, or a lot of our new new business opportunities um uh come out of face to face we go to a lot of industry events uh conferences um that's where we get um other than referrals that's where we get a lot of our um new business so that's that's been a real challenge um to not have those opportunities okay fantastic thank you very much for sharing that with me john um and i'll just go on to my favorite south american friend mr vicente i shall unmute you now my, I would say that my biggest win has been being able to redesign all my marketing strategy and change it and now sell something different, sell to someone different and doing differently than before. And the challenge is actually being on people, uh, houses or even offices, premises that the, most of them are closed and no one is actually giving us the keys or access to carry out some jobs. Okay, okay. There's, there are, I, I know there are, I work with a few construction clients and uh, I'd say half of them have got that issue. I wouldn't say they all have. So I think uh, um, it, it might be a case of targeting the people that, that are back at work at the moment. I, I might have some ideas for you on that, Vicente, actually, in, in, at some point. So um, what I shall do is I shall go back to sharing my screen. Um, so it's four o'clock now. I'm just conscious of time. Um, so I'm going to go back to sharing. Thank you for everyone that contributed. I really appreciate that, actually. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going over to the Q&A box. Okay. So um, what does a business coach actually do? And, and the, the way I, oh, the way I, figured that um, is it depends some business coaches are really consultants and all they do is tell you stuff they will tell you the right things to do so if you've got a problem if you've got a problem converting uh, uh, leads to clients they will come up with ideas to help you achieve that and then you will go away pick one of their ideas and that will be it um, and there is definitely a value for consultants in the marketplace uh, a coach will get the very best out of you. It'll be an unreasonable friend if you like. It'll not be afraid to challenge you. 
um, to get the very best answers. So what I find is a lot of the answers are already actually in our own heads. So if, if and there might be some, thing, some ideas that you've already had that, that have worked in the past that you've done that you've stopped doing, and we need to be reminded of that. Um, so a, a, a coach would basically be designed to get the very best out of you. It wouldn't tell you anything, it would literally just ask you the right questions to get you to take the right action in the right areas. Now, what I found is neither of those two options work well in isolation. So what I do is I have to balance support and accountability. So for example, if I've got a, a client that's sitting in front of me or a client at Action, Action Club and, and they're struggling to uh, make online marketing work, if all I did was to ask them questions around it, yeah, they might get some clarity on what they needed to do, but sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So sometimes I had to turn into Mr. Consultant and actually give them some ideas to help them get them started, encourage them to test and measure their marketing, look at the results and then work out exactly what we're going to do from that point in and also give them other ideas as well. So I don't want to just coach people. I want to help people and support them at the same time. Um, the other side of the, the, uh, the seesaw, you can see is the accountability side where I've helped somebody. They know what they need to do. They promise to go away and do it. And then at the next meeting, they turn around and say, I haven't done it. And I need to work out exactly why that is. So accountability for me is a word that I, mean, I think it scares a lot of people, to be honest with you, because accountability is usually a word that's linked to an errant politician, for example, um, or, or a warlord or someone that's done something really terrible. But really, for me, accountability is finding out what, what's gone well, because it's not all about what's gone badly, what's gone well, what hasn't gone so well, what haven't we done, why hasn't it happened? For some people, it's just they haven't had the time. So, okay, if that's the problem, that thing that you said you were going to do last week, you haven't been able to do it because you haven't got the time, maybe we need to start looking at your time management first, because that's the thing that's actually stopping you. Um, maybe it's a, a, a limiting belief you've got and we might need to explore that a little bit as well or maybe you could just be delegating it to someone else who could do it for you or outsourcing if you run a small business um, so really it's a mixture of support and accountability um, if someone's overwhelmed they're going to need more support than me asking them questions why haven't they done stuff um, so I, I try to balance things very carefully um, if you've got any questions on that put them in the Q&A box and I'll be sure to answer that at the just before the break. Um, so who do we help? Um, so I've had, I've had this, uh, this question thrown at me quite a lot. Am I looking to help people who are about to go into a hole or about to, uh, about to have a real problem? And do I help build a bridge over that hole to stop that happening? Do I help people that are in a hole already uh, because they need to know how to get out? Or do I help people that are out of the hole and they're actually happy? And the answer to that is all three people. Now, most people I come into contact with tend to be in one of the first two positions on this, uh, this scribbly drawing that I've created. They tend to be fearful of the future. They're on the left hand side or they're in a mess at the moment and they need to get out. Um, but I would say that the person on the right hand side needs a lot of help as well, because sometimes they've got a complacent mindset. And what tends to happen is they go full cycle and they end up going back into the hole again if they're not prioritizing and focused on the right things. And I've got another drawing that I've done just to just to illustrate that again. So this was um, a, uh, a Swedish guy uh, back in the 1960s. Daniel Lindstrom probably knows his name. I've forgotten it. Uh, but he, he developed something called the House of Change. Um, and the idea being is that we, we constantly move throughout this house throughout our business career. Um, so if we say we start off in the complacency room at the top left, um, if we're complacent for a long period of time, what tends to happen is we don't focus on the changing environment around us. We tend to sit back, wait for the business to come in. Everything goes well. And we've been in these positions, a lot of us before. And we all know what happens when we're complacent for a period of time. We, we tend to experience a problem. But when we experience a problem, we tend to sweep it under the carpet. We don't want to deal with it because we enjoyed being in that complacent room. We enjoyed putting our feet up and maybe taking our foot off the pedal. Um, and we tend to move into denial. We don't like the position we're in now and we'd rather ignore it. We'd rather sweep it under the carpet. Um, if we stay in denial long enough, what tends to happen is the problem really starts to rear its ugly head. 
and we have to attack it. We've got no choice but to deal with it. It could be a cash flow issue. It could be a, a member of staff that isn't helping us at the moment. Um, and things get worse and worse and worse to the point where actually we've, we're forced to admit we've got a problem. And we move into the bottom right room, which is confusion. We're confused. We're not sure how to fix this problem. We know we've got a problem now. We're admitting it. We're facing it head on. We're coming up with ideas, but we're not really certain um, what it is that we need to do to actually resolve this issue. The great news is, is if we're asking ourselves the right questions, we're surrounding ourselves by the right people that are asking those right questions, we tend to come up with some great answers and we tend to move into the room at the top right, which is the room of action, which is the room that I like to stay in and the room that I want my clients to stay in all the time. Because if we've come up with some ideas and we're taking action, that's great. Now, what tends to happen is if we take enough action, if we're that proactive, great things start to happen. We get great results. And the danger is we move into the top left room again and we go back into complacency mode. And then we move around this house in a constant uh, state uh, around our business career. So my aim really is to block up the doorway between the action room and the complacency room at the top. Because if I'm doing that, I'm making sure people are focused on what they need to be focused on, taking the right action, and they're not moving into the complacency room. The most people I'm speaking to at the moment are in the confusion room at the bottom right because they're not sure what they need to do. They need help, they need guidance, and they want to be taking the right action to move their business into the right areas. Um, I, sometimes I ask the question, could we please put anyone that's in the, in the denial area, please put their hand up? Um, and uh, one, one person usually puts their hand up, it's always one. Uh, and I'll always say, well, hang on a minute, if you're in denial, surely you wouldn't be putting your hand up in the first place. Five people have raised their hands just to dispel the myth that it was only one person. So thank you very much. Um, just out of interest, um, 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 could, any, could anyone that's uh, raised their hand please unraise their hand at the moment? Just want to see those hands go down. Now, if, any, if anyone that's actually in the room of confusion at the moment, if they could raise their hand, please. OK, fantastic. So there are a fair few hands going up there, I can see. Good. OK, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So um, I've got a short video to play you now. This is a guy we've been working with for a year now. Um, so he started off in Action Club. He progressed to one to one coaching. Uh, but I've got um, I'm hoping that the volume works for you. I'm going to play this video. So um, I'm going to. Um, sit back three minutes um, and this, this will show you exactly how we help Patrick with his business. So without further ado, I shall press the play button. Sorry, I do apologize. Oh, I see. There's um, a few people that are saying they can't actually hear. So I do apologize. I might just see if I can um, just turn on the sound on the computer. If I can't do that, here we go. Share computer sound. Um, if you could do me a favor, guys, and just type into the, uh, the webinar chat box. I'm going to start this slide again. If you can't hear it again, please let me know because I don't want to put you through uh, three minutes of no volume. Um, you can't see and you can't hear. So can anyone just type into the chat box very quickly if they can see the actual, um, the, the actual video? So a few people can see. 
Nasmin's just asked me how long does the webinar go on for. So we're going to have a break in uh, about five minutes, Nasmin, and, and then we're going to reconvene and the rest of it will take another hour or so. So if you want me to uh, send you a recording of it afterwards, I can. But what I find is the people that stay on get better questions answered and then they learn exactly what we do and how we help. But um, I shall start playing this now. If you can't hear again, uh, just type into the chat box. Um, so I felt like probably... Right, I'm going to start that off again. I do apologise. We wouldn't have progressed. Um, we would have, uh, at the very best, I think, remained the same. Um, or worst case, you know, maybe we would have, we would have um, come across harder times even. But, um, you know, now I'm fairly confident we are definitely moving in the right direction. Business was, was going all right. Um, we, we'd done really well up until that point. Um, I think that the, the time that I received the call from Action Coach was um, it was a case of uh, uh, the right time and the right place um, because I was at a stage where I felt that the business had become a little bit stagnated. Um, so we'd sort of grown to a certain point and then we just sort of stayed the same for about sort of two to three years. Um, and as well as that, obviously, you know, I, I was a builder turned uh, businessman, not the other way around. Um, so I felt like probably I got to the stage where I built it up to a point and I just needed that little bit of extra help to take it to the next level. Um, being a business owner is quite, quite a lonely place to be. Um, although you have, you know, all of your employees around you, um, when you have to sort of get, you know, talk to the nitty gritty of the business and, and, and stuff like that, you know, it's always uh, the right people to, to, to lean on. Um, so, you know, having an action coach is like having someone else on your side, really. Hold you to account to get to get uh, important jobs done that will normally just get put on the back burner because they're not the, involved in a day-to-day -day running of the business. I needed that that sort of extra nudge um, to get us to get us moving again. Um, obviously, you know, each and every week you have to list down tasks that, you know, you say that you're going to carry out. Um, and where obviously I meet with Phil every week, you know, if, if I'm not getting those tasks done and I... <laughs> I, shall, uh, I shall stop sharing that actually. That hasn't worked particularly well, so I do apologise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen again and um, I will continue with the... Uh, with, with, we're going into a break imminently anyway, so I do apologise um, and I'm going to have to go back to start the show from where we're at. I do apologise. I shall go through this super quickly. Uh, we don't want to cover that off again. So, okay, so basically we're about to go into a break. I do apologise for that. Um, I'm not sure what happened with the uh, tech side of things, but um, what we're going to do after the break, we're going to come up with a whole heap of ideas for our business, and then we're going to look to prioritise them at the end of the session so you at least can go away with some great ideas. So thank you very much for now. Um, leave, the, uh, leave, your, um, uh, leave the session on. I'm not going to cancel the session. Um, and then in five minutes time, so I'm going to just look at my clock. So it's 16, 11. So what we're going to do is at uh, in five minutes time, so 16 minutes past four, we're going to get back on and we're going to start and we're going to try to come up with some great ideas for your business. Fantastic. So back soon, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. Um, enjoy the break and I shall see you in five minutes time. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi everyone, um, back in the room. Hopefully you've all had a chance to make a cup of tea or coffee, get rehydrated. Um, you've got another hour or so to go. Um, but what, what I want to do is make sure you get real value out of this hour. So this is the point when I want you to use your pens, get as many notes down as possible, get as many action points down as possible, uh, because without any action points, we're wasting our time, like I said. So let's begin. Firstly, if anyone can't hear me, if they can raise their hand or if there are any issues at all, uh, please uh, put something in the Q&A box. Um, no problems at all. So we're coming up with people that can raise their hands. So if anyone could just type in um, OK into the Q&A box just to let me know that you can hear me and see me, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. So we're back. We're feeling refreshed. We're ready to go. Um, so let's make it happen. So um, um, I had a think about this a while ago and, and um, about what, what is a business. And our definition of a business is a commercial profitable enterprise that could work without you. Um, now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it means um, it's got all the elements that a business should have. So commercial. Is it have you actually got a product or service that at least one person would want to buy and recommend you? Um, profitable, we need to be making money, otherwise we're, we're not going to be able to afford to live. Um, and we want it to work without us ultimately, because otherwise all, we've do, all we're, we're doing is we've just created a job for ourselves to be blunt. If we're acting the same as a business owner as we would have done as if we, if, if we were working for somebody else, then that's not right. We need to be acting as, as a business owner and not just as the person that's actually doing the work. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you're a one man or one woman band, there's no one else to do the work for you. You have to do the work. And I get that. But a percentage of your time needs to be put aside to looking at the planning of the business, looking at the marketing, looking at um, putting a sales process in place, looking to create the systems and processes in place so that the business is sustainable, firstly. And then when we look to grow it, we can actually make sure we're growing it in the right way. And what I'm going to do now is show you the steps that we actually put in place to help businesses grow. Now, not all of you are going to want a business that can work without you. And that's why I've put the word could on the screen. Um, I, I spoke to someone a while ago and they said, no, look, I enjoy what I do. I never want it to work without me. And I said, well, actually, you could be right, but you could be wrong. We don't actually know what we're going to want in five years time, 10 years time, really, do we? So the importance for me is that you create a business that could work without you because the chances are that means it's putting enough money in the bank. It's got systems in place. If you choose then that actually you want to carry on working, then great. You've got a lovely profitable business that, that works well and is efficient. You've got the right people working for you. You've got recruitment processes. Everything works really well. Fantastic. If you want to carry on working it, then great. But if you want to sell it, or you want uh, you, you, you maybe envisage maybe someone buying the business or having a management buyout in the future, then that's something that could happen as well. So if we work towards that, then that is something, then whatever the business looks like, you're going to choose whether you want to work in it or not at the end of it. So the six steps that we've got to making this happen. So what we're going to do, we're going to cover the first two steps in depth today, because these are the two areas that you've all said in your challenges early and the reason you're here you need to cover off. So I'm not going to hit the last four steps yet, but let's look at the first two firstly. The first one is mastery. So that's that's taking a business from chaos to control. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, my business isn't really chaotic. Um, I wouldn't say it's chaotic, but if you're not in control of your business, it probably is to a certain extent. You may be not in control of your time. You're not in control of your cash flow. These are all things that we need to put in place before we can start to look at the next step which is niche, um, which is essentially the sales and marketing. The reason we've called it niche is, uh, is that um, the, the definition of niche is no price competition, as we'll go on to talk about. So it's creating a product or service that you can charge uh, the rate that you want to charge it out at, where you're not competing on price with everyone the whole time. I know a lot of you are in price sensitive industries where pricing is, is critical, but what I want to do is help you find the right people deliver the right marketing message to those people so then you can actually make the money that you deserve and that you need to be able to run your business which is really important 
COVID related or not COVID related, it doesn't matter. Now, after we've actually gone through the first process, mastery, we've gone from chaos into control. We've created, um, we've created the, the, the measures that we need to be able to sell and market effectively. We've now made some money and we can start to put some time and effort into the systems of the business. So system for me stands for saving yourself um, time, energy and money. This is really important because when we've got systems in place, we can then take on some people. This is, this is an order, by the way, that no one runs a business in, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they, they flit around, um, and our challenge is to make sure they're taking things in the right order, following the right process, so they've got the best chance of creating the business that they can be proud of. So the reason we put systems in place at the leverage level is so that when team members do join you, you've got proven systems that they can just slot into. So if you imagine McDonald's, um, if a new staff member comes in, they've got systems in place to actually, so that staff member can slot in really, really effectively and very quickly. They've got recruitment systems in place before they hire that team member as well. Now, I know we're not all running burger joints that are running globally, but every single business needs systems in some way, shape or form to be able to support the team once you actually take the team members on. And by team, I also mean outsource members as well for the one man and one woman bands amongst us. Then after we've got the, the, the systems in place, after we've got the team in place, we've now got an opportunity to replicate what we're doing. So we might think, well, hang on a minute, we've now got a team um, of people that are producing the systems. We've got a sales and marketing operation that's running very predictably and smoothly, and we're in full control of our time and our finances. Now we've created this business that's making money. Is it possible that we can replicate this and do this in another location? Maybe we can even franchise the opportunity. Now, I know that nearly everybody in this call is not thinking that far ahead. You're thinking at the bottom two rungs of the ladder. You're thinking, can we make some more money now? Because we need to make more money now. Um, can we get in control of our time? And maybe we've got a couple of team members that we need to be able to uh, work more effectively with. So that's what we're going to focus on. But after the fifth level, synergy comes the results. And that's where we're starting to, starting to make some serious money. And we're starting to look at actually... Could we retire early? Could we retire at the age of 45, 50, 55, rather than assuming we're going to have to carry on working until we're 65 or even beyond that because we're stuck at level one and we're just putting food on the table and that's what we're destined to do forever. That's not where we want to be. And I know that's not where any of you want to be. I know you're not necessarily going to want a, a, global, opera, a global operation of franchise businesses. I get that but I bet you, you will want to get past the first two levels to get into a more comfortable situation than you're in at the moment. So what we're going to do, guys, we're just going to focus on the first two levels. I'm going to encourage you to get your pens out because there are certain things that you're going to come up with ideas and I'm going to challenge you to come up with some ideas of your own as well. So step one, like I said, is mastery. And the first step there is destination mastery. So um, what do I mean by that? I mean creating a business plan that can actually translate you, the activities you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis into the goals that you're looking for. Um, time mastery is the second thing. So being in control of your time is critically important, not just going, being able to go home at the right time, for want of a better word at the moment, because a lot of us are at home, um, but, but actually being able to manage our time more effectively while we are at work as well. Delivery mastery, that's all about creating and, and delivering a product or service that your customers are really happy with and want to come back again and again for. This is usually the area that most people think they've got nailed and very few people have because when I do some digging, I find some things, you know, I've phoned, I've phoned up clients before at their landline, no one's picked up the phone. Um, I, I've looked at the odd online review on Google and it's not been that great. Um, so what we need to do, we need to look at if there are ways that we can improve what we do at, at what we do on a day-to-day -day basis so our customers come back for more wouldn't that be worth something worth looking at sorry and finally being in control of the numbers so that's actually understanding the numbers of the business it's a specific area that most people don't enjoy doing um, so I work with them on that because I know they need to get in control of their numbers to be able to look at growing their business and I'll go into that in a bit more detail so the first thing is um, with destination mastery, we're just going to go over the four mastery areas first. Um, what we cover off on the Action Club course is, is look at, we're going to look at how, how to work out what you want personally. So that most people that have been through an alignment day with me, like I know Daniel has, 
um, what we do firstly for that first hour of that day is work out what that person wants, wants personally. So um, what do they enjoy doing? What do they not enjoy doing? Um, how many hours do they want to spend working and how much money do they need to be earning now and in the future? Because if we're not focused on what we need personally first, we can't design a business that can deliver what you want. So it makes perfect sense to not only focus on the business, but to focus on what we want personally first is really important. Um, so we're going to look at creating the business that, that can deliver that. Um, understanding how to create a workable plan. So most people think they know how to create a business plan, but from what I've seen, most people don't. They either haven't put the time aside, maybe they do know, but they haven't put the time aside to make that happen. Um, but what they haven't done is they haven't created a, a, a goal, an end goal that's specific and measurable and achievable and time framed. Um, and they've not created the activities needed to get there. Um, some people will say to me things like, OK, so um, what's the point in creating a, a plan? Because, it, you know, things happen like COVID-19 will get in the way. There's a great example and things will go totally pear shaped. So my thinking is that shouldn't affect your end goal. But what it does affect is your plan to get there. You might have to adjust your plan to get there. So for people out there that were running live events, they now need to run them online. So they're not changing their end goal at all. They're just changing their route to get there. So if you have a think about what sort of plan you've got, if you've got a plan, does it need revising? Is it on your bookshelf? Uh, does it need dusting off? Do you need to redo it from scratch? Have you not got a plan at all and you need to start working on that? So what we'll do in the Action Club sessions will help you work through how to create a plan so you're in full control of, of actually directing the business and you know what you're doing on a day to day and a week to week basis, because that's working towards your end goal. If you haven't got a plan, you don't know where you're heading. End of story. Um, we could just be pootling around, picking up bits of business here and there, but when we've not actually got an end goal at all. And what happens when we haven't got an end goal? We'll never reach where we want to get to because we haven't defined it on paper and at least in our own minds. Um, this is really important. I might have mentioned earlier, linking activity to results. I've seen business plans devised by business owners to, uh, to borrow money, which is, which is quite appropriate at the moment for a lot of businesses out there. Um, and they've plucked figures out of the air. They've created a plan in the right way to actually raise funding. Um, and they've got the funding. Great job done. Then they've been the plan, um, which is a crazy thing to do, but partly sensible because it wasn't a great plan to begin with. They haven't put the activity needed to hit those goals. They've just plucked figures out of the air and said, OK, so we want to make uh, 1.2 million by the end of next year for want of a better amount. Um, so that means 100,000 a month. So that's what we're going to go for. But they haven't worked out what what they need to put in place to hit that 100,000 a month. Um, so I pluck those figures out of the air and I know a lot of you will have smaller businesses and some of you will have larger ones. But just to illustrate, we need to be understanding what activity is going to lead to which results. Now, some of you are going to say, well, we don't know if we spend an hour a week on social media or three hours a day on social media, what results that's going to give us. And you're right. So what we need to do is we need to test and measure the activity that we're actually putting in. So if you've come up with any ideas on destination mastery so far, I'd like you to uh, firstly score yourself out of 10 with where you're at the moment. 10 meaning you've got a fully fledged business plan. Everyone knows what they're doing. You know that what you're doing on a day to day and a week to week basis is leading towards that. So you've probably got a score out of 10 in front of you now. Um, and now I'd like you to have a think. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about what do you need to do to get that score lifted by one or two. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds just to come up with, a, with an idea. So work out what score you've got for having a business plan, having a destination, and then work out what you need to do to improve that. So I'm just going to give you a few seconds to write that down. Hopefully some of you have got some ideas down now anyway. Great. So um, I would ask you a question now. Now, right next to that uh, last line you've just written in, uh, what impact would that have upon your business? What sort of financial return do you think that would generate for your business if you had a business plan 
that actually could guide you towards a final direction? What, what would that give you? Now, I know that's a difficult question to ask, but work out roughly speaking, you know, if you had a plan and it gave you something to work towards, do you think that would double the size of the business? Do you think that would just add 10% to it? Do you think it would make no difference at all? Do you think plans are a total waste of time? In which case, put zero pounds next to that idea. So hopefully now we've got some ideas as to what we could do to improve our business in terms of planning. So the next thing we, we're going to look at is time mastery. One second. So time mastery is about getting back in control of our time. Um, so what we're going to do during the Action Club course is to provide you with the tools and the disciplines you need to save you time. Um, so we're going to look at um, this, this, this age old thing that, that business coaches come out with working in the business versus working on the business. You can't work on the business the whole time unless you've got a business that could 100 percent work without you. But what you do need to be doing is putting some time aside every day to work on the business. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, if I explain to you what working in the business means, working in the business is doing the, the, the job that you have, that you set out to do. So say, for example, um, business coaching, great example. So working in the business for me would be coaching people. Working on the business for me would be the planning side of things. It would be coming up with marketing plan. It would be looking at uh, working at how I can recruit people, uh, do, devising a process for recruitment, looking at a, a social media strategy, looking at the things that we need to do to grow the business. Otherwise, all we're doing is trading our time for money. You know, if, if, I, if I didn't have aspirations to build a bigger coaching practice and take on more coaches, I would only be able to reach a certain level. I would only be able to help so many people because I've only got so many hours in the day. So for those of you that are trading your time for money, have a think about that. If your diary's full, and you're making good money, that's fantastic. And if that's where you want to be, that's great. You don't want to change that. But if you aspire to something bigger, then you need to start to think about, hang on a minute, how can I now free up a bit of my time to actually look at how I can grow the business? So typically what we do with Action Club clients and one-to-one -one clients in the early stages is we look at their time management. Because if their time's full, if their day's full already, then how are they going to ever spend time working on the business? It's actually impossible. So what we need to do is, is work out strategies to save them an hour a day, maybe to start off with, or even only half an hour a day. And that's going to really help us because then we freed up the time that only enable us to grow. So hopefully by now you can start to see why we're focusing on this stuff first before we get to the juicy side of things, the sales and marketing side. Um, so getting you and your team, whether it's an outsourced team, um, but just getting more efficiency out of what you're actually doing. Um, one thing where well, I'm a big proponent of is creating a default diary um, and daily frog sheets. I can go into more detail on that, but there was a fantastic book called Eat That Frog by Dr Brian Tracy that I would strongly recommend you read. It's a very thin book. So if you don't like reading, buy it anyway, because it's very thin um, and it really helps you understand how to get in better control of your time. So that book's called, that, sorry, yeah, the book is called Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy and it's fantastic. But the idea being is that I would help you to, to, to get more from you, the time that you're actually spending at work and hopefully spend less hours at work if that's the route you want to go down as well. A default diary, I can go into a bit more detail on the course and help you manage to uh, um, use that to help you uh, manage your time more effectively. Um, and then working out the urgent and important matrix. A few of you will know that already, but are we actually doing it? Are we actually working out what's urgent and what's important, what we need to do, what we need to delegate, what we need to dump and what we need to defer? That's really important as well. Um, and also delegation skills. It's all well and good knowing the stuff that you can delegate to staff members. But have you actually got the skills to do it effectively? How delegation worked out for you in the past, whether you're delegating to an in-house staff member or whether you're outsourcing to a, a third party. Um, and you're not necessarily getting the results you want. Um, and I've seen lots of issues. The reason why delegation is so important is firstly, it's going to save you time. Um, but the, 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 thing that I've, the thing that I don't understand is that the reason, well, sorry, the thing, the reason, the thing that I do understand is the reason we're no good at it is no one's ever taught us, right? <laughs> if you've never learned how to delegate effectively, that's why we're getting the results we're currently getting, which in some cases aren't really working for us. So 
I'd like you to all have a think now, score yourself out of 10 in terms of, are you getting the best use out of your time? So 10 means you're working exactly the number of hours you, work, you, you wanna work. You're getting exactly the, out, the, the results out of your time that you want. That would give you a 10. Um, anything uh, less than that, score yourself appropriately. Um, I'd like you to write that down in a number, a score out of 10 for, for time mastery. Any questions by all means use the Q&A box because I have got access to that. Um, now I'd like you to have a think about what do you need to do with your time to actually get that one step higher. So if you're a five out of 10, what do we need to do to score yourself a six out of 10 uh, uh, getting in better control of your time? What do you need to release? Is there anything you're doing at the moment that you could be delegating or you could actually just be dumping totally that you don't need to touch? So hopefully you've come up with some ideas around that. Give you a couple more seconds. Okay, so um, you've got a score out of 10 for time. You've written exactly what you need to do to improve that right now. And if you, next to that, again, like we did with destination, if you could get in better control of your time, if you could spend your time on the, on the jobs that actually get the best return for you, um, what sort of impact is that going to have on the business in terms of an amount of money? Um, if you could spend more of your time doing the stuff that you actually get paid for, so say, for example, you could free up 20% of your time to get paid uh, and, and actually use that time as, as, as billable hours, depending on which industry you're working in, um, then is that going to add 20% to your, to your turnover, which in turn would add more to your bottom line? Um, so have a think about how much money that would actually make you in addition uh, to the amount of money that we we're talking about in terms of creating a business plan that we can be proud of. So um, let's move on. So now we've got delivery mastery. So um, this, is about, this is all about actually creating a product or service that your, your customers are really happy with, that so, they're so happy that they're gonna refer you to their friends and family um, and you can generate more business that way. How to create raving fans. That's what we're gonna cover during the Action Club course. Uh, a lot of people say, well, yeah, actually, I've got a great, I've got a great product or service. Um, all our customers are really happy. We always get good feedback. Uh, but really what we're looking to do is, is to create raving fans, create people that are actually um, advocates of what you're doing, telling everyone they bump into that how wonderful um, your business is and how amazing you are, how great you've been at helping them. And I'm sure there are some people out there, some of you that have already got raving fans, which is great news. But if you th think about um, all the companies that you've ever bought from in the past, whether that's been personally like a restaurant or whether that's been a, uh, I don't know, a washing machine, a repairman or a delivery service, Think of how many companies that you've ever dealt with in your life, probably hundreds. How many of them would you actually rave over and say, look, Phil, you need to speak to these guys. They are absolutely amazing and they will look after you. They, they, they offer a great service. They sell great products. The price is amazing. The customer service is stunning. Um, I bet it's not a high per percentage, right? So let's not be fooled into thinking that our business is so great. We're one of those two or three percent that everyone's raving about because the chances are, we're lying to ourselves if that's the case. So we're gonna look at how you can create more raving fans, generating a lot more business in terms of referrals and repeat business, of course, as well. So the other thing's ensuring you and your staff have the right skills. So um, uh, most of us think we're good at dealing with people. Um, most of us are good at dealing with people from what I've seen. However, if there were things that we could actually do to improve our customer service levels in terms of actually really making people happy with what we're doing we'd want to learn those skills right rather than just carry on doing what we're doing um, understanding what your customers need so i'd like you to have a think about if you've ever um, created a customer feedback form if you've ever asked people uh, about the products or service you've delivered what they've been happy with how you could have improved so the feedback form that I'm going to send you all a bit later on, I'm going to put a link in the chat box, is going to be exactly designed around that. I'm going to want to understand exactly what you're looking for, what your challenges are, and where you need help, because that's going to ingratiate myself more with you, 
Um, and also it's going to enable me more importantly to provide you with a better, better quality service going forward um, than what I'm doing right now. So have a think about that from your point of view though. What could you be doing to find out from your customers uh, so you can improve what you're doing? And sometimes it might not be just a case of, um, of your customers um, praising you for what you're doing, but maybe your customers might say, well, actually, they're, you know, you're only really doing half of the job that I need you to do. Here are some other services we're buying from other people that maybe you could offer. And then you start to think, wow, so maybe this isn't just a case of uh, mastering our delivery and improving our customer service levels, but it's an opportunity to actually sell as well and make more money that way. Um, so the, other, the last thing I've got to say on this subject is delivering value, not just when you're selling to people. Really, really important. Um, so if, imagine if you've got a friend and the only time you ever speak to them is the only time they ever call you is when they want to sell you something or they want something from you, should I say. Um, that person's going to cease to become a friend of yours for, for a while, for, for much longer, right? Because you're going to get irritated with them. And um, what we don't want to do is fall into that trap in, in terms of business. The only time when we're talking to people is when we're selling to them. If there are opportunities for you to set, you know, if you come across some information on the internet that, that you find could really help one of your, one of your customers, then copy and paste the link, send it to them so for your interest. Um, um, I used to do this actually through the post actually quite a lot. And I don't know why I've stopped doing it because I think people actually really appreciate receiving things through the mail. Um, at just just sending out little tips and ideas to people because they're re that's really going to help you when you come to actually have those selling conversations with them when they're looking to buy from you the conversion rate is likely to be that much higher because you're actually delivering value for them and not just when you're selling like i said so now i'd like you to do the same again score yourself out of 10 on how great you are at delivering a perfect or near perfect product or service to your customers um, and write down one action point only on what you could actually do to, to improve that. A few people have been typing the uh, numbers into the uh, chat box. Uh, make sure you write it down on a piece of paper for you because this is important as well. Um, so I can see a couple of people have put sevens out of 10, sixes out of 10, uh, which is great. Um, so write that down on a, on a piece of paper. What do you need to do to get that level one level higher than you're at at the moment? What would be the number one action point the number one thing you can put in place right now, maybe it's something quick, maybe it's something simple. Have a think about that, write that down. Excellent. Okay, so now again, um, if you could deliver, uh, if you could actually action that one point, and grow your business to the point whereby you're, you're delivering a, a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 level, what sort of impacts that gonna have in terms of profitability in your business? And um, how many more products or services are you gonna be able to sell? Uh, when you put your prices up, are your customers gonna say, absolutely fine with that because you, know, you deliver such a great product or service, we've got no issue at all with that. What impact would that actually make on your business profit wise? What difference would that make to your bottom line? So if you work out a rough idea of a figure there, that's going to help you understand the importance of, of actually improving your delivery. I know this is a tall order actually coming up with figures, but it's just to get a rough idea, just to start sowing the seeds of actually what's more important here, delivery mastery or time mastery. It's all important, but believe me, there are certain things that you can see some quick wins. Now I'm going to go on to the final part of the mastery level, which is the numbers mastery, the thing that I know that 80% of you all love to hate. Uh, and lots of the, the clients that I've got absolutely hate numbers, can't stand them. They just want to do what they want to do and they don't really want to get involved in the numbers. But the problem is with that, if we're not in control of our numbers, we don't know how to improve. So um, I, I've used this analogy before, but would it be a fair assumption to say that sports teams spend a lot of time analysing figures and analysing numbers to the nth degree? Um, I know that is the case. Um, and the reason they do that is so they can measure what they're doing and they can manage and they can improve. Because if you don't know what your numbers are, you don't know how to improve because what gets measured gets managed. What gets measured gets managed. I'll use that expression over and over again. Um, so. What do I mean by that? So knowing and understanding your key numbers. So we're not just looking at um, 
the your profit margin we're not just looking at your turnover figures we're not just looking at the, the stuff that you can see on your accounts we're also going to be looking at things like developing a business dashboard um, so what does that mean exactly it doesn't just mean turnover profit how much money we've got in our bank it means how many leads have we developed online in the last month compared to the same month last year it might mean um, how many hours you're, you've spent in the last uh, two days in terms of sales. Any numbers that are going to impact your business that are going to make a difference. You know, how many, uh, how many sales calls have you made within the last month? Um, because what we can see is after a while, once we start to measure the numbers of the business, we can then start to see the impact of, those, that, of that measurement. Because if we can see that, hang on a minute, the reason why we haven't had any uh, leads have come in in the last month is because we haven't done any marketing. Isn't that interesting? So now what do we need to do? Oh, well, hang on a minute. If we look back at last year, uh, we had a fantastic April last year. It was really, really good. And what, what did we actually do? Well, let's have a look at the numbers. Wow, we were really hot on social media. We put out 17 posts on LinkedIn and Facebook in that time. And we know that five of our clients actually came from those posts. So why have we stopped doing it? That is the benefit of having the numbers because you know what's working, you know what doesn't work, you know what to tweak, um, and you know where you need help because you might find that actually you've tried three marketing strategies, three marketing ideas, and they haven't worked for you. You now know that the numbers aren't working for you, so you now know to seek help and ask people like myself for some ideas on how we can help you. Uh, a business dashboard is a great thing to have. It's something when I first built my first one, I loved it because all it is is a snapshot of where I'm at at any point in time. A bit like a balance sheet, but with more detail behind it. So I can see exactly what my guys are doing, what I'm doing and what results we're, we're getting in. And the screen will flash red if there's a problem. It will flash green when everything's going swimmingly well. The areas that are red, I can then investigate and find out why those problems are existing. So if this is something you think you might need, make a note of that. Testing and measuring, critically important. Um, if we're not testing and measuring what we do, so the, the video I tried to show you of Patrick earlier, um, he's a construction client of mine. Um, one thing we did with him was we, we measured the results he was getting from his marketing. Before we worked with him, he didn't know. And what we found was that by, by actually uh, calculating the number of leads and the number of sales we were getting from certain, certain things, certain places he was advertising or promoting his business, we can see what was working and what wasn't. And what was interesting was he was going to ditch, uh, I think it was Checker Trade, because at the time he felt they weren't working for him. He was making an emotional business decision and not a logical one. And it was only when we got the numbers down, we said, ah, the logical decision is the right one is to keep going with Checker Trade for the while. I'm not saying Checker Trade are great, I'm just saying they work for him at that point in time. Um, creating a profit, a budget, and a cash flow forecast. Um, I think some of this stuff really scares a lot of people and they've never done one before. They don't know where to start. That's something we help with. And that's something we would help with on one of the action club sessions for certain. And in one of the earlier sessions as well, we want to get in control of our numbers so we can see how we can help you with the business. Um, so have a think about the number, the, the numbers side of your business, how in control of your numbers are you? If you've got a P and L, if you've got a budget, a cash flow forecast, you're halfway there, so that is fantastic, congratulations. If you've got no real visibility on your marketing numbers and your sales numbers and, your, and how the profit relates to the leads that are coming in, um, then you, you, need to, you need to be looking at that maybe a little bit more. So give yourself a mark out of 10 for how in control of your numbers are. Write a note underneath again, what do I need to do to get that score up by one or two? I'll give you 30 seconds on that. And then I'll ask you to, write an amount after that. If you were in more control, what, do you, what difference do you think that would make to your business in terms of profitability? Any questions at all, by the way, I'm more than happy for you to throw them into the Q&A box. So um, Francis has put, how best can I create a mailing list without provoking people's space? Um, maybe if I could um, just ask for a bit more detail around that, um, Francis, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, if you could just uh, 
just put some more detail behind that. And for the rest of you, I mean, we are going to come on to the sales and marketing side, Francis. So that might be something that I'll be covering off in a minute. If it's not, feel free to ask me the question and just word it a little bit differently, just so I can exactly understand where you're coming from with that. So by now, we've got uh, four ideas, at least, I hope, coming out of this session. We've got some ideas on what you need to do to get a business plan in place, to, to improve this, your business planning, to get in control of your time to get in control of your delivery of your product or service and to get in control of your numbers. And I'm hoping that you've got an idea for each of those of what you need to do to improve. And then you've got a pound figure afterwards of what impact would it have on, you, on your business to actually get that up to a higher number, nines or tens. How to collect money, sorry, that was the last thing as well. Um, we need to work out in terms of the numbers, how we're gonna create systems in place to collect money. I know a few of you will have uh, people that owe you money now that you're struggling to collect from. That's something I'm, I'm happy to help with as well because I know that this is something that's a real issue for a lot of people. Um, but more importantly, I suppose, creating systems in place so you don't have to have this problem again in the future is another issue. So this is the, this is the second step. This is the one that we're, so remember we, we've gone over mastery. We've gone over the four areas of mastery. You need to go from chaos to control. We're now going to go into the profitability side of the business in terms of the sales and marketing. So, um, and that is the second and last step we're going to cover off today. So bear with me on this. You're going to get a heap of ideas from this. Really important you use your pens and make some notes. So the, our definition of niche, like I said before, is no price competition. Creating an offering where the price is actually of less relevance actually communicating value to your clients is the secret there but actually uh, looking at your looking at your five ways of, of creating more profit within the business and actually using that to help you um, I'll just see if I've got any more questions coming through um, so Louise has just put got lots of contacts no clue how to turn that into business especially when it's been long that I served them so you've been looking after them for a while um, Francis has put email marketing is what I've been doing I've got a few contacts can I, for instance, send mails to those that I've not received individual feedback from as to whether they would like to receive the services that we offer? I'm happy to answer that in a minute, Francis. So bear with me on that one. And Louisa will cover yours off as well. So um, first, first question I've got to ask you is, have you got something that makes you different about than your competition? Because I mean, I've had this conversation with a couple of you that are on the call now. Um, if we could actually come up with something that makes us different, as, as businesses that we can make a big splash about in our marketplace. Uh, U, USP stands for unique selling point, if you're not sure. Um, and also coming up with a guarantee as well. And maybe your USP is your guarantee. So for example, our guarantee is we've got a six month guarantee for Action Club, one-to-one -one coaching and mentor club as well, which I'm gonna mention a bit later. Um, if you don't make the money back that you've invested in Action Club, um, any time within six months, you can ask me for, for a full refund. And I'm bound by the terms of my franchise agreement with Action Coach to actually fulfill and send you that money back immediately. Um, so I know a lot of you are going to be thinking, uh, well, hang on a minute, I can't offer that. I can't offer a, a money back guarantee. It's not going to work in my industry. And I get that and it probably won't. But what's important is that if we can come up with some sort of guarantee, I've got a, um, a bookkeeper that I've been working with now for um, just under a year. And what we did was we spent two whole coaching sessions working together to come up with something that he does that's different than everybody else and a guarantee that he's got in place that's different from everybody else. So when he's actually speaking to clients at the moment, or speaking to prospects, should I say, he can actually show them his USP and his guarantee that really wow them that they wow i've never heard a bookkeeper do that before um and just because you can't think of it now while i'm talking to you about this doesn't mean to say that there isn't one already being built by a competitor of yours maybe they're not necessarily a local competitor maybe they're uh, in another country but every single business is able to compile a usp and guarantee and imagine if you have one where would you put it you put it on your website right you put it at the bottom of your quotes you communicate it to people you're speaking to on the phone or on a Zoom call or when you're in a face-to-face -face meeting when we're allowed to get back to that. And just ask yourself, what sort of impact would it have upon the business if you had 
a USP and a guarantee that you could communicate effectively to your prospects. So I'd just like you now to, to sort of make a note of that if that's something that you think is relevant to you and then put an impact next to that as well in terms of an amount of money. What do you think that's going to do to your conversion rate? Um, if you're converting 100% uh, of your clients at the moment, you're, you might think, well, there's no point because they're all buying from me anyway. But one thing I would say, there are people that you're not talking to that aren't buying from you, that have actually heard about you, looked at your website, you've not actually had that conversation with. So an effective USP and a guarantee could definitely get you more leads in in the first place. And if you're converting all of them, then that's fantastic. So just have a think about that, make any notes. So the next thing I want to go over is um, the five ways to grow your profits. So you'll, you'll see the screen at the moment and wondering why there are loads of X's and equal signs on. And I am going to explain to you how this works. So what I'd love you to do is go into the Q&A box and type in uh, the answer to this question. Um, could you list, could you give me an idea of the three things that most people want more of in business? So the three things that people want more of in business, if you can only think of one or two, type that into the Q&A box and I'll just read out some of the answers. I'll be interested to see what people say. So income, clients and growth from Liz, that's fantastic. Uh, money, Francis, all good answers. These are all things people want more of, right? Um, got time time clients and money anything else other than that a few people would probably have uh, answered those already and they haven't bothered up putting an answer time um anything else we'll get one more answer coming in freedom profit growth we can see save tax job satisfaction fantastic so i think we've answered um we've answered those um so the five things in terms on the on the financial side that people are looking for are customers they want more customers right most people want more customers they want a higher turnover they want more money coming into their bank account and they want more profit coming in um, and they think well that's that's exactly what we, we should be shooting for right and that makes perfect sense um I'm just opening the, the chat box because I, I think a couple of people have put them in there. So leads, average sale and profit margin. So um, I think Vicente has seen something like this done before, actually. Now, the thing that you'll all notice is that each of those three areas that we want more of have come after the equal signs. So if we only focus on the outcome of what we want, we're probably not going to work out what it is we need to do to actually get those outcomes right. Um, so there are five areas of your business that you need to focus on to actually generate this output, these figures that you actually want that's going to make a difference to you, your business and your life. So the first one is leads. We need to pull in more leads, right? Because if we haven't got any leads coming in at the moment, we're just reliant on existing business. And some people do very well on that. But let's face it, if we want more business coming in, we can't always rely on existing business because that business will drop off at some stage. We do need more leads coming in. Now, if you've got a lead, you need to get them to a customer. You need to be able to convert them, right? You need to be able to uh, come up with ideas and strategies and, 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 and sensible ways of actually converting those leads into customers. Um, and that might involve putting a sales process in place. So if that's something you haven't got down already that's something we help with an action club and one-to-one -one coaching as well developing a sales process that can actually take those leads through to customers not in every case but we can certainly help people grow in those areas next area average order value so um, if you've got a customer he's got to place an order with you right um, now imagine if you could actually increase the value of that or of, of each of his orders that he's placing over the course of a year that's going to impact upon your profit margin, right? Your turnover. Next, we're going to look at the um, average number of transactions per customer. What do I mean by that? I mean the number of orders that customer is placing with you every year. So if you're in a position where you're selling uh, a one-off product or service and that's it, you're not going to get any more many, you're not going to get any more orders out of in that year. I get that. But maybe there's something else you could be offering. You could diversify slightly to sell that person something which they are currently buying from somebody else 
that you could be selling them. So have a think about that. Um, and also the profit margin as well. Are there ways we can get more profitability by looking at how we're structuring our, our, our products or service? So what I, what I mean by this is that what we do, what we're going to do on Action Club, we're going to help you generate more leads. We're going to come up with ideas to help you make that happen. We're going to come up with ideas to help you boost your conversion rates. We're going to come up with ideas to help you increase your average order value. Um, and also your average number of transactions per customer and profit margin. We've got 50 different ideas for each of these. Now, I'm not just going to reel them off to you in the next Action Club session we run or the one after that and just reel off 50 ideas for you because you'll be swamped. But what we'll do is we'll go around the room, we'll ask the right questions, we'll find out what you need in your business, in your industry, and then I'll come up with some ideas for you. And then I'll work with you to help you implement those ideas to get the very best out of things. So um, have a think about which of those five areas you want to target first. Uh, for lots of people, if you're brand new in business, you've not got any business at all, leads are obviously what you need to start off with. But if you've been in business a while, you might not want to focus on leads initially because it is the most uh, sort of uh, time consuming and expensive way of growing a business. That's why businesses struggle in their first couple of years because they haven't got a client base to work with. So for the people that have been in business a little while longer, you might, need, you might want to start looking at your conversion rate. If you're getting leads coming in and you're not converting them, what are you going to do to actually improve your conversion rate? Um, or maybe we need to look at the pricing as well in terms of the average order value and the average number of transactions per customer we've gone into. Now, I want to show you something. Now, this is going to be quite tough. The, the, the webinar has been going for quite a while already, so we're not far off being finished now. But what I want to show you is the impact on changing and increasing each of these five areas. So what I've done is I've created a simple sheet with exactly what we've already looked at with some figures we put in there. So this fictitious company has had 500 leads come in in the last 12 months. He's only managed to convert 20% of them. Um, so he's got 100 customers because 20% of 500 is 20% of 500 is 100. He's got two transactions per client. So each of his, per, each of his guys are actually doing uh, two deals with him a year. And the average order value is, uh, is 1,000 pounds. So the average customer is placing two orders a year of 1,000 pounds each. Hope that makes sense. So if we multiply the number of customers, so we've got 100 customers times two, so that's 200 orders we've now got coming in, 200 orders of 1,000 pounds, creates a turnover of 200,000 pounds. Now these figures might be a lot higher than you're getting, they might be a lot lower than you're getting, but bear with me, this is just done to illustrate a point. So we've now got 200,000 pound turnover coming in, 50% of that's profit margin at the moment because you've got overheads, you've got to pay your, your, your staff or you've got to pay yourself and you've got other cost of sales in there involved in there as well in overhead. Um, sorry, not overhead because we haven't come onto that yet. So we've got 200,000 pound turnover, 50% of that is profit. So you've got 100,000 pounds gross profit. 40,000 pounds of that is overhead. That might be what you're paying yourself. You've got no other costs. So your net profit is 60,000 pounds. That's what you've got left at the end of the year. So this would be a relatively small business um, and every, all of your businesses are gonna be very different. You might have a similar profit at the bottom, but you might have only 17 leads coming through a year because your orders are that much bigger. I get that. But let me show you what happens if we increase each of the five ways by 10%. So the five ways are the areas in red you can see. I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, but basically, we've got 500 leads coming in. We've gone through the same process, but essentially, we're just going to look at increasing those red areas by 10%. So. We can see on the left hand side, we've got the figures we've just looked at. So the number of leads have gone up from 500 to 550. We've added 10% to that. We've put together some ideas and some tips and tricks that have enabled you to grow your number of leads by 10%, whatever that means to you. We've also looked at just growing your conversion rate just by 10% of the 20%. So we've, we've just lifted it from 20% to 22%. So we're not talking about huge gains here. We're talking about marginal gains. I would look to target a growth of a lot higher than 10% of a 20% conversion rate, to be honest with you. Um, so now we've got 121 customers coming in because that's been calculated. 550 leads multiplied by 22% conversion rate. We've now got 121 customers. 
And these, and they're now buying from us 2.2 times a year, if that's at all possible, um, with an average order value of again, 10% higher. So if you're not sure where I'm going with all this, if you look at the red cells, they're all 10% higher than the cell to the left. But essentially what we've done is we've grown each of the five ways. We've grown the number of leads by 10%. We've grown the conversion rate by 10%, the average number of transactions by 10%, the average order value by 10%, and the profit margin by 10% as well. And the overall effect on the business as that's had is the gross profit has gone up from 100,000 in this business to 161,000. Now, if our overheads had actually stayed the same, because we haven't needed to take on any more staff or take on any more overhead to actually make this happen, we've transformed the business from being a 60,000 pound net profit business into 121,000 net profit business just by tweaking these by 10% each. So for some of you, some of the, you know, if you're, if you're running a hundred percent conversion rate at the moment, you can't, you can't increase it by 10%, but you might be able to increase the number of leads by 20%. You might be able to increase the number of transactions by 50%, who knows, but you're going to know by looking at this, the areas in your business where you think you can get the quickest wins. Now, from this point of view, this business has doubled their profit margin just by increasing each by 10%. Um, I'm just going to have some water. So while I'm doing that, have a think about which of those five ways that you think you could grow in and what you want to do to actually make that happen. Okay, so it's 17.09 now. So I did say it would go until half past five. So I misinformed you earlier saying it was going to be another hour. It's going to be a bit more, but um, we're getting to some interesting points here. So do bear with me on this. So um, just for a bit of fun, if we grew everything by 100%, so we're doubling the number of leads, we're doubling the conversion rate, um, you're taking a, profit, a business with 60,000 pound net profit last year into a 3.1 million pound business next year. Are there businesses out there that are doing this? Yes, are they an action club? No, to be honest with you, they're not. I'd be lying to you if I said they were. But what we are doing is we're looking to grow businesses in the key areas, the number of leads, the conversion rate, the average number of transactions, the average order value, and, your, um, and the profit margin as well. And that's the way we can help grow businesses on the sales and marketing side. Um, so now you've probably had a think now so far about, um, uh, about the, 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 the decision as to whether you want to spend and invest money working with me again in the future. And I get that. So what's important is that we're making logical decisions now against emotional decisions. So emotional decisions at the moment is any amount of money is a cost to the business. I'm not spending the money. A logical decision would be based more on value to say, actually, could this actually be an investment? Could any money I spend on business coaching be an investment for the business? And actually, has it got an opportunity to make more money? And if it hasn't, have I got a guarantee so I can pull the plug at any point in time, get my money back so I'm not out of pocket anyway. Um, so what I wanna do now is just go through exactly how Action Club works. So the investment level for it is 500 pounds plus VAT each month. Um, and I'll tell you what's included in that. Now I will, I will go over in a second about Mentor Club, which is a lower cost investment for you, which might be more suitable for the micro businesses amongst us. But have a listen to see what's included in Action Club first before we make any decisions. So like I said, it's a group coaching and an education program for up to eight business owners. 25 fortnightly sessions in 12 months. If you miss a session, they'll be recorded and sent to you so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's every other Wednesday from three till 5.30. So this is a time commitment and I get that. So what we're going to have to look at, if you're concerned about the time, is actually focusing on the time in the first session or two sessions to make sure that you're actually saving enough time so you can invest those two and a half hours every other Wednesday. Um, workbooks and additional learning materials. We, we pass around books from time to time if we feel that there's something that's going to really help people. There are books related to business planning, so we're really going to look to help people with that. Um, there's support and community within the group. So we're not just looking at the other seven members of Action Club that you're actually seeing on a week to week basis, but we're also looking at the, the wider Action Club community. So we've got other Action Clubs in place, one to one clients in place. We all get together, we all learn from each other and we meet up and we go out for a meal every now and then as well, which is always nice when we're able to, that is. 
Um, we've got a private WhatsApp group I set up a few weeks ago as well, which has been really helpful for sharing and supporting uh, people with ideas. Um, and um, I, I'd actually put this at cost price attendance at our quarterly growth club planning workshop. So um, what we do is every 90 days we get together usually up in a hotel up in London called the Devere up in Holborn and we work with a group of a, a wider group of people maybe 30 to 40 business owners putting a plan in place for the next 90 days now I know some of you have done that already and some of you have actually signed up to actually do this again in the future so um, if you're paying for that at the moment with me that's going to be now included so I've actually misinformed you on the pdf I sent out I said that is going to be chargeable at 75 pounds uh, an introductory session 100 pounds after that a month to join and I'm now waving that to everyone on this call now you've actually invested time with me and as a thank you I want to throw that in free of charge so uh, regardless of the fact that it says it's chargeable in the book that I sent you it's not so that's included so this is where you come up to town uh, four times a year uh, dinner's on us uh, we come up with some great ideas but more importantly you leave with an actionable plan for the next 90 days and guess what we're going to be focus on, focusing on sorry, in every single action club session after that we're going to be focusing on that your plan and making sure you're held to account to make it happen. Um, Mentor Club is, is a pared down version of this now for those of you that £500 is, is a bit of a steep investment at the moment, I get that. And I wanted to offer everyone something, another idea, which is going to give them coaching, which is going to give them help and encouragement and ideas. But they're not going to be, uh, it's going to be a slightly larger group. It's going to be online only, sessions with up to 12 business owners. Um, there's going to be none of the education we've discussed. So there aren't going to be, um, I'm not going to be educating you at all. But what I will be doing is I will be coaching you. So that involves looking at what's, what's gone well, holding you to account and making sure that every single mentor club session you show up for, which is again, is going to be three o'clock on a Wednesdays as well, but the, the every other week. So it's still going to be at the same time on Wednesdays. You're going to get the chance for me to hold you to account to do the things that you've promised yourself you're going to do. You will get the chance to ask me questions, uh, but there won't be any sort of uh, formal education process involved in Mentor Club at all, uh, because it's only one hour, it's quite fast paced. We're going to get through as much as we can, but we're going to aim to get you back on track with your business. And then at some stage in the future, you'll probably say, right, now we've got, uh, we, we've, we've got through maybe the, the worst of the problems. We now we can, see, uh, we can see a need for some more education and some more help. So we're going to upgrade now to Action Club. And that's open to anyone on Mentor Club whenever they want to do it. Um, we don't, it's not, this isn't for a set period of time at all. This is something you can start, you can, you can carry on forever. You can stop in two months. That's absolutely up to you. There's no tie in exactly the same as with Action Club, if I haven't mentioned it. Um, although we've got a six month money back guarantee for Mensa Club and Action Club, you don't have to go for six months. You can pull the plug at any point in time. If it hasn't made you the money back that you've actually invested, then I have to refund you in full. And, and that's in writing. Um, the investment level for this, as you've seen, is £150 per month. So it's more affordable. It's only one hour per fortnight. Um, and we're actually, it's going to be slightly larger sessions. We can have up to 12 business owners. So hopefully that's something which, uh, if you're a smaller business owner, that might appeal to you more. Um, so um, just so you can see our, our uh, product ladder that I mentioned to you earlier, you can see the one-to-one -one coaching is something we offer for uh, between 1,500 and 3,000 per month. That's for uh, when we're looking at much larger businesses of 50-man 50, 50 businesses and up, uh, the investment level for that is 3,000 a month. For smaller businesses, uh, we're looking at nearer the £1,500 per month level. Um, it depends exactly on how many people I'm going to be coaching within that in terms of that business as well. Uh, some people prefer fortnightly coaching. They can't, uh, they're struggling to invest the time that they're looking at a, a lower investment level of between 1000 and 2000 per month. Action Club Plus is something that's interesting. So this is where you come along to every single action club but you also get one-to-one -one coaching in the in-between weeks. And the investment level for that is £1,000 per month. Action Club, again, slightly more affordable for the smaller businesses where you need the education, you need the accountability, you need the support, you need the support of people around you as well. And the investment level for that is £500 per month. But we meet up fortnightly for two and a half hours. So just to get that straight, Action Club is every two weeks for two and a half hours. Mentor Club is every two weeks for one hour. 
So I'll repeat that, action club for two and a half hours, mentor club for one hour. And there are the investment levels on the right hand side. Planning packages as well we've got. I'm not gonna go into much, much detail there because time's running out on us, but essentially we spend uh, a day with you. If you just need a plan, a fully fledged plan for the next five years, we will spend an entire day with you, uh, one to one, putting that plan in place for 995 pounds. Now, if you sign up for Action Club, like I said, the Growth Club, this quarterly planning sessions at the bottom, um, that's gonna be free of charge. If you're a one-to-one -one coaching client, that's free of charge as well. Uh, for Mentor Club, we would just need to charge you at 75 pounds, not just as a one-off intro, but every session you come to. So it would just be 75 pounds for each session. So that would be essentially 300 pounds per year spread over the year. Um, for everyone else that just wants to join Growth Club, it's £100 per month if they didn't want anything else from us. Um, so hopefully you can see now, um, to make a logical business decision as to whether coaching's right for you and which of these packages are right for you, I suppose the best way to do that would be to add up all of the, uh, all of the pound figures you've just written down over the last 45 minutes or so, see the impact that those that, 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 that actually making those differences will make to your business, and then what we'll be able to do is make a decision as to whether Mentor Club's better for you really or Action Club's better for you. Um, I know there are a couple of people on the call also looking at one-to-one -one packages as well. Um, I'm going to get the chance to ask, uh, answer some questions which I know I'll be getting in. Um, so, okay, so Louise has just put, if I just chose the Growth Club at £100 per month, can I move up any time to the Coaching Club if I want? Yes, you can. So um, what often happens is um, people start off wanting one thing from us and then after two, three months, they realise they need more. Some people need less. So I've known some people to actually say, well, look, actually, the Action Club's great. I, I, I do know a lot of this stuff already. Um, and actually, I just want to scale down to Mentor Club or to Growth Club, in which case, 100% okay with that. Um, that's something which we do. We don't sign people up to set programs although action club itself is a 12-month program a rolling program the reason it's a 12-month program isn't because i tie you in at all for any months it's because i'm actually um i've actually i'm actually making sure i don't repeat the same sessions until a year later if that makes sense so if we're running a session on time management we won't be running that same session until a year later otherwise i'll be repeating myself too many times um, so anyone that wants to ask ask any questions at all can put that in the q a box So uh, just to reiterate, um, the guarantee is six month guarantee. So that means that any time within six month period, you can ask for a full refund if you haven't got the results that if you haven't at least made your money back. Now, my aim isn't to help you make your money back from coaching just to keep myself in a job. My aim is to help you grow your business, to help you take your business to where you want it to be. Uh, and, and the idea being is really the six month guarantee should never come into play because you won't have to actually exercise it, but the option's there if you do need to. Um, I only want to work with people though that want change, and I'll just cover that briefly. Um, so will I be locked in? I've gone over that already. No, you won't be locked in. Um, ideally, you're going to put your back into it, and you're going to stay for three, four months though, because we don't tend to see results immediately. You know, it's a bit like if you're um, decorating your lounge. The first day you spend on it, uh, you're stripping wallpaper back. You don't see great results immediately. You need to wait until it's completed first. So what tends to happen is people spend the first two, three months learning and the things that they're putting into practice in the first two or three months has a net result in the fourth, fifth and sixth month. So although we, we, we say to people, you can pick it up and drop it whenever you like, historically, we found the people with the best results, the people that have stuck at it and, and, and put their back into it and, and done the things that they say they're going to do. Um, just very briefly, what I thought I'd just show you is, is a list of the, if you're not sure about this still, I want to uh, give you an idea as to, as, as to whether it will help you or not. So it will help you if you can see the benefit in learning new skills. Um, really important. Um, you've got to be committed to making a change because ultimately you're committing to showing up every, every two weeks. If it's Action Club or if it's Mentor Club, it's every two weeks as well. Um, you enjoy learning in a fun environment. So uh, these, these, these sessions aren't like this, by the way. This has been more of an education session. You will have come up with action points. I know that. I know you'll have written stuff down. Uh, but really, the idea being is we're going to interact with each other a lot more. 
this isn't going to be a glorified 2700 slideshow that I've put together every single two weeks because that will drive you nuts. The idea being is that you come up with ideas and that, that the education forms an important part of it, but isn't the be all and end all. We do spend a lot of time working in groups, sharing as teams, coming up with ideas, encouraging each other and, and spotting opportunities for each other as well. Um, you accept that accountability is the glue between commitment and success. This is a quote I shamelessly stole. Um, the idea being is that um, if, you, if you think about um, anyone that's, that's been overweight in their life, which um, I certainly have at one point, um, did we know at that time what we needed to do to lose weight? Yes, we did. We knew we needed to eat more vegetables, cut out sugary snacks and exercise more. It's not rocket science, right? We knew it, but we weren't doing it. So the idea with accountability is that, that we make sure that the stuff you already know or the stuff that you've just learned and you're putting into practice, you're actually doing it. Really, really important. Because what tends to happen is after these sessions, people tend to go away. You, you'll have a list right now, five or six different action points. Fantastic, I'm gonna go away and do them. Will it actually happen? In your heart, you know it probably won't. You might do one thing. You'll be committed right now, I know you will. But the problem is because you lack accountability going forward, the success might not follow that. Um, just to show you who it won't help because there are people that group coaching just doesn't work for. Um, some people don't work well in groups. Uh, they, they don't actually enjoy um, sharing with people. They, they enjoy sort of being a bit more of a private individual and I get that and that's fine. Um, some people are gonna wanna meet me, meet me weekly. That, that fortnightly is not gonna be enough for them. Uh, because they know they need they want a faster level of progress they want to get to where they want to be quicker and, and they, they know that fortnightly is not slow it's still fast paced but it's not quick enough for them and they're not getting that constant level of accountability that they need to succeed again it won't work for you if you think you know it all already um, there are lots of people out there that think they know it all um, I'm, I don't know it all and I don't purport to know it all but I'm hoping that 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 at least some of the ideas we're going to come up with are things that you won't have heard before and I'm sure that will be the case. Um, if you're not prepared to change, this is really, really important. Um, please, 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 when I shoot down the, um, excuse me, I'll swallow my words. When I shoot you the feedback form in a second, I don't want you to sign up for anything if you're not prepared to change. So ask yourself the question, am I prepared to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, the old Einstein quote, or am I prepared to change? Am I prepared to make a change in the way that I behave and operate in order to get the different results that I wanna get? And if you are, that could work well. Um, I've got a little bit of a break, a water break for myself. We're just wrapping up now. So while you're uh, coming up with some questions, if, if you just type them into the chat box, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop sharing and I'm going to uh, send you the feedback form and I'm gonna post that in the chat box. So if you bear with me for one second, uh, carry on typing questions galore, that's absolutely okay. Um, I'm just going to get my, um, get my feedback form. And the best way that I've found that I can uh, get that over to you as quickly as possible is just by cutting and pasting it into the uh, chat box and the uh, Q&A box as well. So the feedback form, by the way, is only going to take you a very short time to complete. It's a 60 seconds tops. Um, open that up. Share that. I'll copy that link. And then I shall go back into the Zoom session. I shall go into the chat box now. I shall make sure I send this to everybody. So the feedback forms there for anyone that hasn't got any questions. I'm going to come to the questions in a second, but I'm also going to put it in the Q&A box just in case of any, any uh, misunderstandings there. Um, so feel free to type any questions you want in there. So the one thing I'm unable to do at the moment is actually put it into the Q&A box. So just go into the chat box, I open the feedback form, um, fill that in, complete that. It will only take you 60 seconds or so. It'd be really helpful for me to find out more about what you're aiming to achieve. 
if you want to sign up for Action Club, the opportunity is there to do that as well. Um, and the first person that signs up for that, I've got a, um, a, um, a, a giveaway. I've got a, a Kindle Fire that I'd like to give away to the first person. Um, the reason I give away that is because it ties in with the education side. It's easy to load up with business books, podcasts, and information that you can carry around with you. Um, and I'm prepared to send that out to the first person that signs up. Um, and also to everyone that signs up on Action Club, what I'm going to do is organise a meal for us all. When we're out of lockdown, it will all be on me. It will be a nice restaurant locally uh, to, to me in Alpington, and you'll all get the chance to come out and we'll get a chance to share ideas in a more social setting, which can often be uh, very enjoyable and also a good opportunity to do business as well. Um, and that's, so that's something I'm, I'm happy to offer to everybody too. Um, so feel free to type in any questions. If you can't see the feedback form link, um, then please um, let me know. Not seeing the feedback form in the chat panel. Okay, that's possibly because I haven't actually posted it. I've actually filled it in and I haven't posted it. That should be in there now. Could you try to open that feedback form and then just uh, let me know if you can't um, open that feedback form. That'd be really handy. And what I'm going to do now is while you're completing that, go into the Q&A box just in case uh, there are people have asked a couple of questions. Fantastic. OK, so Louisa said she'd like to sign up for the monthly club fund. Thank you. Well done, Louisa. Congratulations. Happy to have you on board. Um, Paul, you've seen the you, hopefully you've got the link for the feedback form now. Um, can you stay? Um, Vicente, could you do me a favour, please, and just type into the Q&A box if you can see the feedback form now in the chat box, the link for that. Fantastic. So everyone's got that. So I'll give you a I'll give you 60 seconds to just complete that. And I'll go quiet and drink some water. On the feedback form, you'll see an opportunity to um, have a conversation with me if you're not clear about what it is you need. Um, then I'm more than happy to uh, book in a call with you. I can speak to you. I've left some time available tomorrow. Um, so if any of you want to speak to me tomorrow, I think uh, any time between 10 and 2, I'm available. Happy to speak to you and help you come to the right decision for you. My aim isn't to sign you up. It's to get you to come to a logical decision that's right for you and your business at the moment. Um, and hopefully me asking you the right questions will help you come to that conclusion. So I'll give you a, a few more minutes to, to go through that. I'd just like you um, to thank you as well very much for um, staying with me. We've gone a, a minute over. Um, as you can see, we're wrapping up now, though. So once you've uh, completed your feedback form, if you'd be kind enough to uh, raise your hand, that'd be really handy. Um, if you pardon the pun. And then at least I can see. Um, that we're ready to ready to ready to tie this thing up, um, and also I'm just going to keep my eye on the Q and A box while you're doing completing the feedback form. Sorry, Louise has also asked, does the guarantee apply to all of the clubs or only to the specific ones? So um, so the uh, Action Club and Mentor Club, the two weekly sessions, the two um, fortnightly sessions, the guarantee uh, is 100% is in place for those. For Growth Club, it's not uh, because essentially it's not coaching. I'm helping you plan your business. Um, but essentially, um, you can pull the plug whenever you want to on that. If it's not something that's working for you, then that's absolutely okay. If you've never been to Action Club before, but I'm sorry, Growth Club before, which is the quarterly planning session, you'll get an opportunity to attend the first one for £75, which is cost price. Um, if you're not interested in any coaching at all, you just want to check it out. 
75 pounds is cost price that's how much the devere charged me because we had to lay on the room and dinner and what have you as well um, and if that works for you then obviously you've got an opportunity to sign up after that so i would want to, i'd want you to try before you buy basically if that makes sense got a few forms coming back through which is great thank you very much so if anyone has um, anyone else has completed the form, just raise your hand. Although I appreciate you're probably going to have to go back into the uh, back into the Zoom call to enable you to do that. So, so Vicente has done that. Great. Any more questions while the remaining people actually complete the feedback form? Just uh, type away. Happy to answer. Um, I'll just answer Francis's question, which I which I didn't get a chance to earlier. So um, email marketing is what I've been doing. I've got a few contacts. Can I, for instance, send emails to those that I've not received individual feedback forms from as to whether they would like to receive the services we offer? I would say at the moment, phone them. Um, too many people, me included, in days gone by relied heavily on emails. Um, I don't think email marketing is a bad thing. I think it can work very, very well as part of a structured marketing process. Um, but too few people are picking the phone up at the moment. Um, and what we tend to find is that, okay, some people aren't at work at the moment. They might be furloughed if they're staff members, uh, but there are a lot of people that are more than happy to take your call. Um, I've noticed that I've not really noticed any drop off since COVID in terms of people taking calls. I would definitely say to, to speak to people, provide the human touch. People actually crave the human touch at the moment as well because they're not able to see anybody at the moment. So I think it's a nice thing to do to phone, to phone people up, ask them what they need, what their challenges are, what they're looking for, when they're looking for it. And is there a possibility for a future conversation or a Zoom meeting to actually uh, close the deal for want of a better word? Um, so a few hands are going up. Um, still, fantastic. Rich has completed it as well. Francis has completed it. Um, does anyone need anything else from me now? So Tracy's completed it as well. Great. Um, are there any other questions at all to go into the question box? I'll just uh, wrap up in, in a minute or so. I'll just give you another 60 seconds just to uh, type in any questions and to submit the feedback form and then i think that's uh hopefully that's enough time for you all um fantastic a few more forms are coming in now that's great good just to check now we've just got another question coming in i believe couldn't answer question six, Louisa. Don't worry. I'm happy to go over that on, on a call with you. I'm happy to speak to you tomorrow about that. I'll, um, I'll give you a call and hopefully we can get some clarity on that question. Uh, not a problem at all. So um, I'm just going to go back to the screen um, because I know that we've, you've been really, really helpful and kind. And thank you so much for actually um, joining in, participating. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, presenting to you today. Like I say, Action Club's not going to be about presenting. It's going to be about working with each other, educating, helping each other, filling in the knowledge gaps. Um, and Mentor Club 2 is going to be about the accountability side, making sure we're doing the things we've been promising ourselves to do for a while now. Um, I'm just checking the Q&A box finally. Um, Claire said, thanks, Phil. Apologies, I have to leave to get my daughter's tea. Totally understandable. Family first is a motto of mine. Um, I totally agree that Paul submitted the form as well. Thank you very much, guys. Um, if you haven't had a chance to um, answer all the questions on the feedback form, after I cut this session off, you'll still be able to. So that's not going to stop you. Any questions at all, you know where I am. You can email me. I'll be in touch with anyone that submitted a feedback form tomorrow just to make sure that they're, they're making the right decision for them. And then obviously we can book you in and we can get you started taking your business to the next level.
So um, I'd just like to say thank you very much. Um, I've covered that off already. Um, and congratulations for being one of the 20%. Um, minimum I expect you to do is take action. Actually make sure that at least one of those ideas you've written down are gonna actually happen. So thank you very much for staying with me. I'm sorry I've run over and apologies for the technical issues earlier with the video. Really appreciated working with you and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much.